the uh, but let's pick up where we left off last time. Uh, so the adventurers kind of made their way from Fandolin um, to a nearby city in the southwest of the Sword Coast, um, known as Leylon. They were sent there um, at the request of um, uh, High Priest Fennec in the Temple of Bahamut from Neverwinter, the temple from which Flux originated um, and kind of was sent to Leylon as an ambassador to her god, uh, the dragon, the platinum dragon, Bahamut, uh, to essentially um, make sure that there was a presence of Bahamut in this new town, especially since they heard um, that the um, Temple of Lathander essentially sent their envoy uh, and paid off um, the Lord Protector of Neverwinter to kind of like be the first big deity to establish in this rebuilding uh, rebuilding of Leylon. Um, so you kind of made your way over to Leylon, um, had some wacky adventures along the way involving zombies, uh, eventually did make it past the zombies in a very strange inn on the side of the road. Uh, and when you approached Leylon, you discovered that it wasn't as calm as you were hoping. Uh, in fact, outside of the city, um, the uh, residents who were uh, the residents who were trying to rebuild the city and kind of sent there um, as settlers were all kind of gathered outside the northern area of it, a uh, bit of a panic mob, uh, so that they could um, so that they could um, kind of escape from impending creatures and magics. Uh, as you kind of walked up, you discovered there were three people kind of running the show. The main one uh, was a kind of stern dwarf woman named Griselda, uh, who seemed to be kind of the head of this council of three. Uh, and as you kind of discovered more and talked more, you found out uh, that people had somehow invaded uh, this town and, and been capturing citizens and killing guards. Uh, and everyone kind of fled and escaped. Um, as you headed into town to try to figure out what was happening... Um, some of these enemies attacked you and charged out of the town, um, and they looked like they were kind of a mix of watery type uh, storm creatures. Some were riding these horses made of water. Um, after a pretty intense battle to start off with, you were able to defeat these ones. Realizing they all came from the town, Griselda and the rest of the council um, kind of really urged you to go back into the town, discover where they come from, and, and try to save the rest of the villagers, knowing that there could be some serious danger <coughs> now at this point. Um, seeing how many enemies came out of the town. Uh, in doing so, you found a Kraken priestess uh, who was trying to summon more water creatures um, in this like dark ritual with, which was causing storm clouds up above. Um, after you killed her, uh, unfortunately you didn't kill her fast enough to end the ritual, uh, and some of these giant water elementals ended up attacking you regardless. Um, thankfully, before Torin could be drowned to death, uh, he turned into a giant crocodile with some smart moves. Uh, and the rest of the party was able to um, murder them. Uh, shout out to Sless, <clears throat> who uh, launched a giant fireball and did tons of damage in the beginning. Uh, and some really smart and clever plays by the rest of the party were all able to survive. Uh, no one even went unconscious, but there were some close calls. Um, eventually, you, you found the uh, villagers um, kind of captured and tied up on a nearby island, um, off in the marshy distance, and um, were able to rescue them. Uh, they all kind of went back uh, to that northern area where the uh, the rest of the town had kind of escaped and fled to. Um, and the council members, including Griselda, had some thanks to share, were, were happy that you were there, uh, and then offered you a, a place to stay basically with them uh, while you were in the town to see if there was any further help or if you just wanted to rest up for the night, etc. Uh, and that's kind of where we left off. Um, is that... Uh, <laughs> Uh, is at or or less what it is is that you know when you actually have the character played by someone who knows what they're doing things just work it's fine no big deal uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, the um, that's kind of where we'll start this mission as you guys are waking up inside of the city um, although most of the buildings are really torn down and, and still broken and cracked from the centuries of, of unuse and whatever calamity caused everyone to flee this town in the first place. Um, but there is a bit of a small makeshift inn that's been made in one of the broken, uh, uh, broken buildings, kind of closer to the southern entrance, uh, which is also <coughs> on the area um, nearby the camp uh, where most of the settlers have kind of like landed and, and are doing most of their business. Um, so it is actually still nighttime and we are, um, all asleep inside of this small inn. Uh, and what I would like everyone to do first 
is to roll a <laughs> wisdom saving throw while you are asleep overnight inside of the city of Leilon. Uh, I got 13. Okay. I got a 7. Okay. Investigation, you said? <clears throat> okay. So, okay. Hey. sounds like the lowest person was, um, uh, Zendri? Oh, nope, looks like it might be Torn. <laughs> no, I am not as low. <laughs> so, uh, you just Torn. typed 5? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, he yeah, rolled, he rolled on his character sheet, he didn't roll on the table. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> Torin, um, you can't seem to get any rest as you sleep within the walls of Leylon. You toss and turn almost the entire night, and you have just really surreal, terrifying nightmares. Um, in your nightmares, you notice a few things keep happening. Um, one, there is a giant crack tower. It, it almost like encompasses all of your vision. Um, it's kind of a square tower with a cracked top. Um, and like as lightning flashes, it seems to be whole. And then lightning flashes again, and it seems to go away. Um, and like you see this, like, like these ghostly figures that are almost cracked and like broken are swooping in and like floating through your face and then jumping out at you. Uh, it is a terrifying vision that just keeps you awake. Um, and like right before you wake up, you almost feel this force just grab you thousands of feet in the air and you can see this tower in the center of what you now recognize to be the town of Leylon. And then it just drops you. And as you're plummeting these thousands of feet, you wake up in a cold sweat, um, not really restful for the night. Um, can I have you roll a constitution saving throw as well? Uh, okay, so yeah, that's good enough. So you, you did manage, to, even through these dreams, to still get enough sleep to not awaken exhausted. Um, but you're still pretty tired um, and <clears throat> struggling to to just kind of groggily wake up as you, you kind of shoot awake. Um, the rest of your party is still sleeping at this point, but it is pretty early in the morning. Um, at this point, it's up to you what you would like to do from here. Was that for all of us or just for Torn? Torn is the only one who had that dream. Yeah. Got it. Okay. I'm going to wake up who's ever next to me. Uh, Seduceus. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. It's, got, it's, it's definitely Seduceus who's next to me. We like to snuggle, so I just had to oh, go with it. Oh my god. <laughs> it's a good nap, dude. Uh, oh, like, oh, dude, I just no. had this night terror. I need you to wake up. This is. Crazy. It's crazy. I'm thinking about, it's crazy. I'm thinking about girls. What? What happened? Oh, my God. oh man. I just had this crazy dream of like the town and this huge tower, and I got like sucked up and then dropped, and it was kind of like this weird vision. I don't know if it was like embedded in my memory from that priestess lady, or if there's just something weird going on here. So, have you experienced anything? <laughs> uh, not. Tonight, I think you drank too much mead, dude. <laughs> nothing hard, nothing long. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> never mind. No, I, had to, I didn't see any towers. <laughs> I didn't get sucked up by any towers. <laughs> that sounds weird, dude. <laughs> yeah, that's scary, dude. Uh, no, I'm like actually scared, so uh, I don't know what we should do about this. I don't know if we should wake the others and investigate or... If Maybe I just had some weird thing. I haven't had a dream like that ever. Oh, dude, you could just cuddle with me, and then we'll just go back to sleep, and then we'll wake up the rest of the guys later. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Uh, oh, my God. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> I don't know why this is happening, but it's just a thing now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, th I think we all know why it's happening. <laughs> And that's me talking to Craig. I think we all know why this is happening. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's good. Dude, that's my favorite show. That's a Carl Bear show, baby. Yes! Uh, 
I think you that's where you got that from. They have a podcast. You should listen to it if you're not I already listening so to it. It's so good. Yeah, it's I need to so listen. Good. I've only seen it or listened to a few episodes. I need to listen oh my more. God, they're so funny. Anyway, what? continue. Carry what? On. what? What time is it anyway? Is it like early to to wake up yeah. everyone else? Like, uh, no, it's 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 definitely morning time. Like it's a, it's it's not like normal wake up time, but I would say like somewhere between six and seven a.m. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, maybe we'll, we'll, yeah we'll wake, we'll wake the others and maybe yeah, yeah. some of them experience something like I did, but I yeah. didn't see anyone in this dream too. It was just me and these other weird flying things. Mm. Dang. Did you die? Um, no, I kind of woke up as I was about to hit the ground in like a cold sweat mm. of fear. Dang. Well, if we see any towers, you're staying outside. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to get up on that. Uh, all right, let's wake everyone else up. All right. Arise. Hey, wake up. <laughs> Arise. <laughs> Arise. <laughs> hey, wake up. Arise. <laughs> they just all turn into zombies. <laughs> that was the dream. <laughs> Here we are. Everyone wake up. I'm going to kiss you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, def- I'm definitely awake. <laughs> what do you want? Well, yeah. this happened. Tor- Torn had a bad dream. He got sucked up by a tower. Yeah. Yeah, it's it crazy flying things, and it was right in the middle of this town we're in or looking at. I don't remember. I think we're close to it. Did you guys have any uh, weird experiences? I was sleeping peacefully until Seducia said he was going to kiss me, so I'm, now I'm awake. <laughs> <laughs> That's I wake up. Nothing to those sorts over here. No, man, I, I was knocked out. Dang. Hmm. Well, I'm a little nervous. I don't know. It was kind of crazy. Felt so real. Maybe it's a sign. Maybe. maybe it's. Maybe we have to go check out. Try to find this tower. Yeah. Did the tower look like the one that's here in the town? Uh, yes. And it like accentuated out of the ground to the sky and it dropped me thousands of feet. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know exactly like how if it was there before. I. It was a little foggy. But very scary. And I don't scare easy. Yeah, maybe we should check it out. Go and do some investigating after we get some fuel in us. Yeah. yeah. Everyone has full health now, so. <clears throat> um, so you guys, you kind of walk out of the room that you were sharing. It really was just one big room because uh, most of the walls are still kind of broken. And you are also staying on the first floor of this kind of makeshift inn. And really it's not even an inn proper. It's just one of the bigger buildings that still had like all four walls intact. Um, and the reason why you were on the second floor is there's holes in the roof and half the roof is missing. Um, so really you could only stay in this space. It was really one of the only areas um, beforehand. Uh, but as you walk out of this space, um, you notice that no one else is inside of um, the building except for one um kind of older um, older gentleman appears to be an elf um, and he um, is kind of like sitting um, sitting at a desk a um, little lazily at this point there's obviously not much to do and he's just kind of like propped up <clears throat> on a chair with his feet up uh, kind of sees you walk in and he doesn't really say much as you walk up he just kind of gives you a little nod and just kind of goes about just like rocking in this like chair that he's got propped up against the wall Um, I think I'm going to talk to him. Torn, um, you should, Torn, you should ask him if, like, maybe describe that tower that you saw in your dream. See if it, yeah. there's one in the, in the town that matches your description. There's only two towers in the whole... Remember, one we were not supposed to go to. One was, like, sketch, and then one was not sketch, I remember. Um, but yeah, I can ask him. So I'm going to walk over to the guy and... Could I ask you a question? He just kind of stares at you and nods. You speak English. Hello? Hello? Do you speak English? (laughs) Or dragon? Or something? He just kind of stares at you. He's like nodding his head. Are you still a crocodile? No. (laughs) I only lasted (laughs) about an hour. (laughs) That would have been an acid trip for this guy. (laughs) 
Uh, so he, uh, he nods his head emphatically at you. All right, I'm just going to grab him by the throat and shake him a little bit. Uh, and as you shake him by the throat, he kind of opens his mouth um, and kind of like uh, grabbing his hair. And like he looks genuinely scared. As he opens his mouth, you notice that his tongue is missing. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Good job, Torin. Yo, well, okay. Wow. Well, like, he's grasping yeah. at your hand, trying to like push Settle him back. down. Put him down, Torin. All right, all right. Someone else talk to this guy. He's... That's really gross and creepy. Can't one of you guys do like <clears throat> mental talking yeah, in your mind? I, I, I think I could do stuff. Telepathy? Like <laughs> and like finally, yeah. the dude, like the, dude, the, the, the oh elf, middle, like the older elf man <laughs> uh, that you've accosted, like just like finally gets his bearings. And, like, he reaches into like a side pocket and he just pulls out like a pen and paper and writes, Hi. What did you need? And then, like, shows it to you. <laughs> like, still very scared and a little traumatized. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> He've accosted this, this gentleman for no reason. That's after they, like after the, the town of, uh, gave you room and board for, no, for, for helping them. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, no. I, mean, I, was, I was spooked from last night. <laughs> <sighs> Does someone want to write my... I don't have good handwriting. Talk to this gentleman. Oh, yeah, what it? I don't know. I do you want to ask him. He said hi. <laughs> Basically. And he hears you saying this, and he writes down. Like you see him kind of scribble. He's like looking at you, and now you can kind of see that he's like. You can't Annoying. tell, but you assume he's writing with sarcasm, and he says, "I'm mute, not deaf." Not deaf. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> What did, what did you want to ask him, Torn, about about your scary tower? Mm -hmm. well, I don't know at this point, dude. Uh... <laughs> He's so confused. <laughs> um... well, I guess, yeah. What's your purpose here? Uh, so he kind of like hears it and he kind of writes down a little bit longer. This one takes him a little bit longer and he's like, I'm here. Uh, I'm here to um, take care of this building and help you with anything you might need. <laughs> okay. Well, I need you to tell me, is there a tower we need to go to anywhere that you know of? Well, I guess that's a weird question to ask you. Do you know of a tower in the town? <laughs> the only tower is the the central tower, which is the the house of Thalivar. And he kind of keeps writing. Um, scary place. Do you not recommend? See <gasps> the wizard. Oh, wow. Huh. I had a dream about a scary tower and falling from it. I wonder if it's the same one. Where can we get in contact with this wizard? Yellow brick road. Uh, he kind of writes up, <laughs> and it says, "In the tower." Oh wow! Ooh. All right. Hmm. All right. What's the best way to get there? Just walk down the street, and he kind of like peers back, like through a hole in the wall, because <laughs> there is just a straight up broken wall, and he like looks at it, and it's like a pretty big freaking tower. You can see it's a it. four story <laughs> tower on top of like a seventy foot like escarpment like it's huge uh and he's like doesn't even write he just kind of points um maybe as, i can see the future this wizard's gonna like pull it out of the ground or something weird yeah as um as uh as he's kind of writing these things uh for you he um kind of reaches behind a little makeshift uh desk they've, they've gotten out of like some some old furniture they've kind of scraped together and some crates and stuff and he grabs a little missive and, it, and he hands it to you and he says from the council and shows it off. Who's the council? Uh, the council <laughs> would be the three people that are kind of in charge of <clears throat> running this town oh, yeah. um, that oh, were yeah. assigned by the the Lord Protector of Neverwinter. Um, and it's a very it's a very easy to connect name. So the Lord Protector of Neverwinter is never ever, <laughs> and I hate it. It's the what the thing. heck? Unobtainium. So <laughs> it's just wait. What is it again? The so the city that he's from is Neverwinter, which is pretty yeah. good ways to the north from here. 
His name yeah. is Never Ember. Never Ember. <laughs> Never Ember. And Gosh. funnily enough, That's original. he's not from the town of Neverwinter. Uh, and you would know that, so I'm going to explain it to your characters. But I just find that as a funny aside to Wizards of the Coast, that was not a kind woo on your part. <laughs> okay, well, yeah. Well, right. we, was there stuff right there? What was he gathering? I missed that part a little bit. He just got like a letter that was like essentially made like like oh, to okay. you, addressed to you. Got it, got it. Okay. From the council. Uh, you want to go find the council? Or... Okay. Maybe we open up the letter and. Uh, so the the letter does um, essentially like to paraphrase. It says like, "Hey, thank you for like the help you provided the town. Um, we've been needing a little bit more assistance as we found ways to rebuild. Um, your um, presence would be requested um, at uh, the next meeting, which um, is essentially today, uh, at the camp outside of town." We never found those kids, did we? You did not. Nope. They're in one of the towers. The yeah. little one, maybe. Correct, yeah. So that was kind of the the thing you said. It's like you were, they were in a tower, and then the, um, the the person that you said that to, the the kind of under-priest to the Lathander Shrine, was very concerned because there are two towers in town. Um, one's kind of a smaller shrine to Lathander, and if they're there, he felt pretty okay about it. But if they went into the Wizard's Tower, that could be problematic. And you didn't remember, so... <laughs> children in jeopardy! <laughs> yeah, we need to go find those children. That's why you had that dream, Torin. <laughs> in the, in the game over tower. Uh, in the game over <laughs> tower, we gotta go rescue them. <laughs> uh, okay, so we have to go to a meeting. When? Tonight? It is, it is, it is currently today. Um, the, the time says the morning, um, so you don't oh, know Jesus. exactly when. It is currently right. morning. Um, First, before we hit the tower. Or? Yeah, and uh, again, the the gentleman uh, kind of running this makeshift in, really more of a hostile, really more of like a hey, this was the only <laughs> building available. Uh, writes on there, um, the camp is outside, on the southern road, and like shows it to you. Also, I moved my camera down so it had a little bit less of like like chin cut off and I keep looking up because I'm used to it and it's not there anymore so it really is throwing me off <laughs> alright well, let's go to the meeting sure can we can we webex into this meeting or <laughs> uh, I mean <laughs> technically Tor can turn into a spider so he can web whatever he wants <laughs> Oh well, boy, that's a you. pandemic joke. <laughs> uh, so you guys do make your way out of the town. Um, just to kind of zoom in on the map a little bit. It is kind of in this area and I can start showing some of these things here so you see them actually. Um, edit, let's show. So that current pin where the town square kind of is, is the um, area where the, the ramshackle inn is, is basically kept. Uh, and then the the settler camp is where um, this this congregation is happening, uh, and it's pretty pretty easy walk to get there. You kind of walk past this um, uh, gapped palisade that isn't really complete. Some of the broken towers that walk through a little bit of um, debris and stuff still littering the roadway, and, and most of the stuff is ancient. It's been, to your knowledge, abandoned for hundreds of years, two hundred years or so at this point. Um, you weren't 100% clear on the details as to why it was abandoned. Um, you just know that it was and it's kind of a place most people stay away from. Um, as you kind of walk out, you do see that like there are wagons and tents. Um, uh, some structures are a little bit more permanent, like actual wooden buildings kind of staked into the ground, um, small sheds. Uh, but mostly, most things here are very semi-permanent. They're meant to be broken down, some chairs and things lit around. Uh, and you walk out uh, into the space and you do see that now, instead of a very panicked mob, um, it is um, a lower amount of people. Not all of them kind of de densely packed together. Some are running around doing their things. You see some people washing and cooking. Um, but you do see a small congregation of people. Um, in, in that congregation are some of the people that you recognize. Um, the female dwarf leader of the council, Griselda. Um, you do see um, the halfling um, priest leader of the Temple of the Thander here, uh, Marigold. 
Uh, and then you do see a familiar face as well that you haven't really spoken to yet. Um, but it is a, um, uh, a half-elf woman that was also at the original meeting, but up until this point, you haven't really spoken to her or heard her, sp or heard her speak. Uh, but she is the last member of this council, uh, you assume, based on where she was. Um, so you kind of see them talking to everyone. Uh, and, and Griselda does see you approach, and she kind of looks over and she goes, Oh, um, well, welcome. Uh, please grab a seat if you're here to listen to the things that we have to say today. Um, we would appreciate some of your advice on... Uh, perhaps some of the happenings in the town, you've already given us quite a bit of help. We were wondering if perhaps you had more to give us. Uh, do we have more to give her? <laughs> you might. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey! More, uh, I don't know if we have any more to give her right now. I just want to tell about this creepy dream. Uh, so as you guys are kind of chatting through that stuff, um, Marigold, the priest of Lathander, kind of pouts up and is like higher pitched, but you know, he's a little dude, uh, kind of voice trying to take charge a little bit, although it seems kind of strange. He goes, I'm very sorry for, for Griselda. She's just a very, um, terse woman. Uh, in either case, um, what she means to say is thank you for joining us. Um, we're appreciative of the help you've given us. Uh, and we thought maybe you could tell us a little bit more of what happened. Um, and, and truth be told, we could really use a little bit of a hand getting this place reestablished. And you obviously have proven yourselves quite capable. If you could maybe join our council meeting this morning and talk a little bit about, um, you know, what you think we might be able to do next and, and maybe help with the problem here or there. Uh, and then Griselda kind of chimes back in and she goes, sure. I guess uh, Lucius is pretty good at reestablishing colonies, so. Uh, yes, uh, <laughs> God. Uh, <laughs> we are happy to sit in and listen to your meeting, and we'll share with you whatever details we can of uh, our battle yesterday. Um, so she kind of gestures, and you see that there are some, like, benches and chairs and crates, really anything they can use at hand for people to kind of sit on. Uh, and it's a, a, a smaller crowd at this point. You'd assume that it's really just the people that need to be here that are in the decision-making pool, uh, which, again, includes the three people you've just spoken to and then a few of the other townspeople that you um, don't necessarily recognize. Um, but the air has definitely changed from, like, one of panic and concern to one more of, like, a resolute. This is the Oregon Trail, essentially. Like, they expected there was going to be trouble. They knew some people weren't going to make it, um, but they're just trying to, like, get this mission accomplished of rebuilding and settling this town given the purview of their assignment. Um, so you hear them talk a little bit between themselves um, kind of as they get you settled and as you grab your seats and settle in. Um, Griselda kind of chimes back up and goes, so uh, what was it that you saw? And um, please give us the details that we would um, you know, need to hear about it. Well, don't y'all jump at once. <laughs> We've got a lot of other things on the docket here, okay? We don't need to just um, sit around and hold each other's hands. Although you do look like tight to it as she kind of stares at uh, <laughs> Seducius in his pocket. <laughs> uh, yes, normally we do hold hands and uh, build relationships, but down, down to business it is. Uh, so yesterday uh, we saw some water creatures that were being summoned um, by, I don't even know what to call her, uh, a witch, an enchantress, summoner, um, but definitely had ties to maybe, maybe an ancient god that we have, uh, somewhat encountered before. Um, she was able to basically cause a really big storm, bring, like, a really big water monster, um, besides the little ones that you guys saw. I, uh... I can promise this, that as we explore the town, we will do our best to deal with any more threats like that. Um, I don't know how much resources you guys have here, but if you guys have any other resources to patrol the area, it might also might not be a bad idea as well. Huh. Or if you guys have anything else you want to add to that lovely story. Nope. Cool. Just like a typical WebEx meeting, I do all the talking. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Is that typical? Is that what happens? Uh, See, he's not even there anymore. 
Talking about it with his new team, his new loves. Uh, I have something to add. Oh, great. In return... Okay, calm down. In return for our services, I ask that um, I'm able to represent my god, Bahamut, and I would like to be able to um, build uh, a temple in his honor here. Um, so, uh, Griselda kind of responds in that you do notice the half elf woman kind of hides a small smirk and she kind of like looks down and like, like, uh, hides it with her hand. Like, what is one of these? And she's clearly trying not to make eye contact with Mary Gold, the halfling, uh, priest of Lathander. Uh, and he's like a little, a, a gas, like, uh, a little put off. Uh, and, and Griselda kind of, um, handles most of this discussion in response first and she says uh well um that certainly is a odd request but i'm not opposed and then finally marigold chimes in on on hearing that and he's like listen we paid a lot of money to the lord protector to make sure that lathander was the original deity inside of this town that is not something that we are willing to back down on. So you can build a small shrine, but not a temple. Uh, I'm going to have to disagree with you. Um, myself, my friends, we risked our lives to save you, the children, and we're happy to do it. And we're happy to stay and help continue uh, protecting you guys. But I'm going to need more than just a shrine. Roll a persuasion check for me. Let's we'll see if I can be persuasive. <laughs> That's actually how I do all my negotiating is in a high pitched voice and like I say you keep pushing this guy. He doesn't seem like he's gonna get yeah, he's a little he much backbone. And I got yeah. a I got a long sword. Oh I got a I got a nineteen. So he's oh a, my god. So he Here kind of like crosses his arms and he says, listen, I can tell that you're clearly a worshiper of Bahamut. And while our gods often align, I just want to make it clear that Leylon is a city that will be dedicated, regardless of whatever help you provide, to Lathander. That was the original just, uh, agreement that we made with our own. I will, however, concede that your help and your god's help has gone a long way so far. So... If you continue to help the town, we will ensure that a building and space is reserved for Bahamut and his worship. But that's all. How big of a building and a space? Can I <laughs> can I be the one who picks out this building and this space? We'll talk about that later. When his voice gets <laughs> kind of shaky. Is there room for a brothel in this agreement? <laughs> Oh, uh, God. So finally, now the half elf woman. You had your moment. The half elf woman hears moment. that, and she is like, she can't hide her smile anymore. She's dying laughing. She's like cracking up, falling off. You get the sense she she enjoys this type of. Uh, so um, I don't know about the brothel, but um, listen again. I think we're at an agreement. I don't believe that we um have disparate needs for the town, as long as we both agree that Leylon will be dedicated to Lathander and his worship. Otherwise, you are welcome here to, to build a space for his followers. Well, we'll see about that. <laughs> we'll see uh, about that. So, uh, finally, the half-elf woman, after she, like, gets a chance <clears throat> to, uh, gets a chance to, um, kind of control herself in her laughing... Um, she pipes up and she says, uh, in a very, like, very feminine voice, uh, she shares, uh, well, so if we're done talking about whatever it is this is, um, we do have other things to do in the town. Um, we still need to figure out what buildings we want to build first. Um, the whole point of building Leylon was it could be a potential port town again, uh, and we haven't even built a fishery. So unless you guys are actually going to build all of these things with no money, we're going to have to figure out an actual way to make the town profitable. 
Hence the brothel. <laughs> uh, while I do find that amusing, um, and certainly is fine to have one available, I don't know if that would be our, um, what's the kind way to say this, um, main domestic product? <laughs> Although the one that we do have does frequently smell of fish, so... <laughs> but you do have one we'll have to talk later yes funny oh enough God. it is fish <laughs> because there's a river so for the fish okay okay what else are you guys supposed to be known for I don't know how can we make them money can we um, help make them money well, I mean, we have certainly a few options at place. I would recommend that we put the resources we do have into building some necessary um, uh, locations within. Um, a fishery would be a good start. Um, we have some of the barges already ready and docked. Um, they were provided to us from Lord Never Ember. Um, I, I believe that might be a good place to begin. Um, if you also believe we need... Um, Anything specific? Shops in town might not be a bad decision. We do have a few people that have um, experience as merchants from other cities that have, have decided to settle here. Um, I can certainly make some recommendations. Um, uh, I don't expect many travelers, but we could invest in the inn as well and, and, and ask for a few more settlers to come in. Perhaps that would bring a few more people of talented background. Um, we've been deciding this for a few days. Personally, my own belief is that we... We, we start investing in some of the economic gains that we could build from the location. Uh, and my own personal background uh, is in fishing uh, and in the sale of such goods uh, in general trade. So I would recommend we invest in the fishery, fishery and the barge yards first. Um, but uh, again, we're, we're, we're welcome to hear input on what you believe is correct. Um, and if there are other things that are in town that you think we might need. Yeah, I mean, I think the fishery is a good idea. <laughs> Um, personally, I would second maybe investing in a bigger inn in some kind of a, kind of like a trade shop, uh, like for weapons and armor, things of that nature for, for travelers might bring in some, some income. Uh, yeah. You also might want to think about, um, a tavern, a place, uh, maybe adjoined to the inn or within the inn that we can have yes, food and drink. That is pretty typical. Live music, maybe? Um, I would imagine um, an inn would work. Actually, funny enough, if you mention live music, um, a, a newcomer came as well just the other day, a young woman. Um, I can't remember her name off the top of my head. Silva, Sia. Um, she said she had a bit of a here and there gig at a nearby inn, uh, the Wayside, something like that. Um, she was concerned, though, that they were attacked, um, so she opted to adhere instead. Um, so perhaps it wouldn't be a bad choice. I'm sure we could find some uh, something for her to do. You mentioned music. That's not a bad choice. Um, and a tavern inn is, as I said, pretty typical. Um, so, yeah, I think we could probably invest in a few of those things. might take us you know, a couple of weeks to get them built up. Um, but I do think if we're all in agreement, that might be the way to go. And she kind of looks over at the uh, two other council members. Uh, Mary Gold is still kind of a little concerned about this intrusion of Bahamut, um, but <coughs> does not. Um, and then uh, Griselda kind of says, okay, well, if we have the money out of the way, um, I, I think we're probably ready to, to move on to the rest of the discussions that we have. Um, and that's defending the town. Where is that idiot sergeant? Um, uh, anyway, uh, and as she's kind of in this, she kind of looks over and she kind of looks at her um, two other council members and she goes, Marigold, are we agreed? Uh, and he kind of again nods and then she goes, Valdi, are we agreed? Uh, she kind of nods and she kind of looks out at the crowd and she is waiting for any response or anyone to object, although she doesn't ask for it. Everyone kind of remains silent. You get the sense it's kind of the way they operate. The council kind of talks about it publicly. If anyone has an issue with it, they'll say something. Um... You kind of see that they're just talking amongst themselves, so no one butts in, and she goes, okay, cool. Um, and then she is about to address you, and as she is about to address you, someone in the crowd um, does kind of stand up, and it seems to be a um, relatively muscular, uh, but thin, half-orc woman um, with um, pretty pale green skin. It's almost yellow. It's so pale. Um, not in an unhealthy way, just typical for a half-orc. Um, and she kind of chimes up, and she says, um... Well, I have uh, something I'd like to, to bring up if I could. Uh, and um, 
Uh, and Griselda kind of addresses her and she goes, um, yes, please share. Um, what is it that you, that you need? Um, and this woman shares, she says, well, um, before we um, s- start building things, I was just a little concerned uh, about some of the, the guardsmen we had patrolling um, the nearby areas. I know we sent a few people to the um, uh, the uh, the mayor of uh, dead men to the south to just ensure our southern perimeter was okay. And I'm just a little concerned. We haven't seen them come back in a few days. And, um, and so finally Griselda kind of like stands up hearing this like timid half orc try to share what she wants and you just hear her kind of shout at her and she's like let's get to the point here uh and so finally she kind of stiff up she says well um my friend um private jessup went with them and they haven't returned and i just wanted to make sure he was okay so i was hoping maybe these folks could go and check that out um and just double check um that he was all right if that's okay it would mean a lot to me Thank you. And then she just kind of sits back down. <laughs> like doesn't want to be involved in this anymore. Uh, as her uh, council member kind of put her a little bit on edge. Um, uh, so the um, the council, the main council member, Griselda, kind of pipes up and looks at you. And she says, well, that's more of a situation for Sergeant, for Sergeant Yorman to handle. Um, I, again, I don't know where he is. Um, if anyone wants to go and find him, that's probably be beneficial. Um, perhaps we can figure out a little bit of, uh, whatever. What, what did you say your name was? Uh, and so the, the, the poor half orc stands up again. Uh, and she says, um, uh, Breltora, Breltora Red Eye. I'm a, I'm a stone, I'm a stone mason. And, um, <clears throat> I just, um, you know, just was worried about my friend. That's all. And then she sits back down. Um, uh, and so the growler now kind of looks and addresses you and she says, I guess it's up to you what you would decide. Um, you can... Uh, instead choose to help Reltora, I guess. That's an option as well. And you could uh, maybe link up, figure out where the sergeant has run off to at this point. Who knows? Uh, and finally, if you chose, you could help Valdi and figure out what's going on uh, with the buildings that we need to build up. So whatever you want to do at this point is kind of up to you. Um, for the most part, we tend to stay in the camp. Most of the town is relatively unsafe. Um the, the buildings aren't quite stable at this point, so it's kind of um, up to you where you'd want to go. Are you looking at the children? No. Okay. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think? Uh, so you I think you're muted. Oh. Yeah, sorry. Oh. Uh, I <laughs> think we should get those kids and then go help that orc lady. Um, roll a um, perception check for me real quick, Seducius. What we got? Sorry, I'm on the wrong screen. Uh, yeah. So, um, not in the crowd, but you can kind of see behind it, kind of toing and froing, is that red dragonborn um, priest of Lysander, um, who seems to be kind of moving things here and there, um, packing things up. Um, generally running around tasks. Uh, he, he's there if you wanted to speak with him about the children since he was the one originally concerned about them in the first place. Mm, yes. Yeah, I would. Yeah. I'm going to make my way over to him. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and say, uh, excuse me, uh, sir. Y- yes, hi. Oh, it's you. Um, uh, yes, I, I didn't catch your name. I'm so sorry. Uh, it's Seducius. Great name. It, uh, sounds, yes. What's your name? very brave. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, my name is Riven. 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 That's awesome. Love it. Love it. Also, a brave name. Uh, listen, uh, we. I, I was just gonna go look for those kids, uh, but I don't know if you have any updates or did you find we the found kids them. that were missing? We found them. They were, as it turned out, in the shrine of Lathander. Thank God. You really had me um, scared there for a moment. I thought they might have actually gone into the um, Tower of Falavar, and that would have been. Ungreat. Uh, in any Wait, case, the tower of what? Th- Thalavar, that's the main, the big scary um, tower in the center that we all try to avoid uh, for the most part. In either case, um, uh, yeah, but we did actually send uh, a few soldiers in there. Um, mm-hmm. Funnily enough, there were actually a few that were um, also meant to guard the tower. Um, and so they just kind of returned to their posts. Um, and uh, I think the sergeant actually might have been with them. Uh, but yes, um, in either case, the children are fine. 
Um, thank you so much for your services. Rafe and Billy mentioned that you were rather helpful, uh, especially you, um, Red Woman. In either case, thank you uh, for all of your help. <laughs> uh, you are very welcome. Uh, can you remind me what's so scary about that big tower? Well, um, it might... Or my, it is. It is the reason um, that the town is kind of destroyed. <laughs> so here's so. the thing. Um, a few hundred years ago, there was this wizard. Uh, his name was Thalavar. That's why it's named Thalavar. And um, he did experiments. Uh, most of them were oh, fine. Uh, he just, you know, really was into conjuring and summoning and... Um, you know, he, he summoned um, within the tower um, some, you know, not so great creatures. Um, mm. And, um, you know, they got uh, they got they got loose, uh, which wasn't great um, and might have um, killed some people in the town a few hundred years ago, which wasn't awesome. Um, so a lot of people kind of left because, you know, that makes sense. No one wants to be around that. Um, and, uh, you know, Thalavar was um, um, confined to the tower, let's say. Uh, and then, you know, he died uh, eventually um, because, you know, you probably have heard about the spell plague. And, um, well, the spell plague kind of did a lot of weird things with magic all over the world. And sadly, it kind of made um, his experiments uh, explode and destroy the town. And then all of the evil creatures got out again uh, and then really destroyed the town kind of more permanently. Um, so... Um, you know, everyone kind of had to be killed. Wow. Uh, okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Why it's so scary. My friend was having weird nightmares about this tower uh, last night. So I just wanted to figure out what was going on. I wonder if that's where uh, those, those zombies came from. So when you say hmm. weird nightmares, um, anything specific? Uh, well, he said that he got sucked up by this tower, and he saw, I don't know, what'd you see, Torn? Things like flying around, I don't quite remember, that were pretty scary. And then it shot me down to the ground, it was hovering. Um, and this gave me like an this eerie, fearful feeling. And I was about to hit the ground and woke up with scared. Um, well... Yeah, that's um, that's uh, some creepy shit there, man. I mean, stuff. That's creepy stuff. Sorry, I know, man. I'm just not good at this pre stuff. In either case, um, yeah, it's not. Um, <laughs> maybe just avoid uh, in general. Um, but uh, you know, I get it. Uh, you know, if you've got things to do there for whatever reason, um, Ga Galio is is kind of in charge of controlling whatever is happening there. He's kind of the the resident magician uh, who knows about this stuff. And um, mm. uh, apparently he's on some like important mission from Lord Neverember to contain that and, and keep us all safe or some such. Have where is he in now? The tower? In the tower, I think. I mean, that's where oh, he's yeah. stationed. We were actually supposed to have a bunch of workers there, but um, yeah, they all kind of skedaddled. So. Huh. Have you ever seen the tower float? The tower float? No. I mean, that's a, that's a big building. Do you see things flying around it ever? Or no, it's pretty ghosty. Oh, flying around it? Um, mm -hmm. Nothing that I've seen. Um, nothing that, uh, you know, I would say is uh, ghosty, but maybe some of the workers would know. There's a few that are still in the camp. Okay. Hmm. All right, we'll check it out. Uh, thank you, Riven, for all of your information. I appreciate it. Yeah, uh, happy to help. Again, thank you for finding the kids. I was really beside myself on that one. I'm glad that they were safe. Um, so I'm sure you had a lot to do with that. A lot to yeah. do with that. Don't uh, lose them again. Damn. That's <laughs> true. Um, I, yeah, I'm really not good at anything. Uh, so that's cool. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> All right, bye. Um, dang. All right, what do you guys want to do? you guys want to try and go to the tower and look for... Galeo or was it Galeo or Ga it's not Galileo, right? Galeo? No, Galio. 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 Dang. <laughs> um or do you want to help out that uh muscular orc lady? 
That seems, <laughs> seems like your kind of thing, dude. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah. So you just to high risk, high reward. <laughs> you do have a few <laughs> things in your sphere that you can kind of do as the town is still trying to like figure out where to go next. So um, you could assist the half work woman. Um, she is concerned for a friend of hers that was all a guardsman here um, that they've been doing patrols into the mayor of dead men. Um, and she's name is so cool. <laughs> she is concerned that um, her friend and the rest of the patrols have not been returning from the swampy area to the south. Um, she, um, uh, Griselda also suggested that might be a task that can be helped out um, by Sergeant Yorman, who's kind of the leader in charge of the guardsmen here. Um, who is also actually strangely at the tower. Um, and then um, you've got the tower that you can go and investigate. Uh, and you can go right to it and talk to, try to find Gallio, the kind of head mage in charge of it, uh, who was tasked to kind of figure out what's going on there and see if it can be contained uh, and, and is safe for the, for the town's rebuilding. Um, and then uh, you could also talk to the workers. There are some of the workers still in this camp that were assigned to the tower and have fled. So kind of hmm. up to you on where you want to go from here. Well, do you guys want to talk to the workers first or just go straight there? Or are you really into helping this lady? <laughs> no, we can... Um... I don't really care about that lady. I... <laughs> <laughs> I think I think we should talk to the workers, and then maybe since everyone oddly seems to be at the tower, maybe we should go see why they're all at the tower today, and probably get our asses kicked at the tower. <laughs> okay, probably. All right, I gotta use the restroom real quick, but I like that idea. Yeah. Sure. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm sure when we get to the tower, it'll be like a whole new map on the screen just for the tower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Probably. It's probably what it's going to be like. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, do, uh, does anyone else want to take a quick bio break while um, Trent's gone as well, or do we want to uh, power through? I don't know how you guys are feeling. I'm fine. Cool. Yeah, I'm okay. So you do start making your way towards the tower back into the town, and you, you start kind of um, uh, walking past, again, these mostly crumbling buildings. Um, behind you, though, uh, now that it's kind of getting more into midday, there are a few um, settlers who have gone into the town. You can see that, that at this point in time, like in the really early building uh, of Leylon, right now they're really just doing a lot of demolition and clearing of debris. Um, not a lot is being built currently. You don't see a lot of like scaffolding or things up. Most of it is um, carts with donkeys and horses coming in, moving things, pulling things out, clearing old stone, um, setting wood and, and things that can be recycled aside, um, trying to just figure out what the layout of the town is going to be. Um, you get the sense that it's almost like while there are still a lot of buildings here, it's almost like a blank canvas upon which we can really make this town however they need it to be. Uh, or as um, uh, Flux kind of suggested, however you want it to be. Uh, so, you know, you kind of see the, the work start to progress on the town as you enter it in, in the early morning. It's now probably about 9 or 10. Um, and as you head towards um, that area, you kind of walk to it and you really now, as you're focused on the tower, get a really good sight at this tall ruined tower as it kind of thrusts skyward. And it's at the summit of this really um, kind of out of place crag because the rest of Leylon is relatively flat, but just dead center of this town is this kind of huge um, embankment um, upon which this this tower is built. And you can see this tower is... It's pretty destroyed. Um, the uppermost floor is um, blackened with soot, um, and it's been cracked open. And there's a huge fissure that just kind of extends down one side of the building. Um, and some scaffolding has been kind of built along the side of this. Uh, wooden scaffolding has kind of been put up, and it looks pretty recent. Um, the rest of the tower seems dusty and old and dirty. And this wood, for the most part, that the scaffolding is made out of, seems pretty pretty clean and, and freshly put together. Uh, and you get the sense that the structure was there and erected to um, create a bit of a working environment um, to possibly rebuild the tower um, or um, get workers up to the top. Um, at the foot of the tower, you do see that there are two ruined arches that are open, and they open into the building. So there's no real doors on the ground level. They're just open archways. Um, as you kind of walk toward and you kind of start to 
uh, go up the switchbacks that lead up this this crag um, to the to the summit to where the tower is built. You do see that there are um, three, uh, there are four humans, uh, sorry, four like humanoid shapes up near the top. One seems to be walking very briskly down the tower. Um, and he, he seems to be well armed and, and with like heavier armor on. Uh, uh, I guess we should just wait for him to come down and we'll talk to him. So he's like walking down and he kind of like looks at you and just kind of does like one of these. Uh, and he's just like, just moving. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, excuse me, uh, sir. Can yep, you hold yep, up a no, minute? No, I'm really busy. Um, uh, yep, they're really busy. Um, they, they, um, fuck that place. Uh, I have other things to put my time on. Uh, and you recognize now that he's close and his voice that this is the sergeant, um, uh, Sergeant, uh, what was his name? Yorman? Hold on, let me just make sure I have it right before I screw that one up. Because I had it and I didn't want to lose it. Uh, yeah, Yorman. Has Yorman. Uh, Sergeant Yorman, it was the gentleman who was kind of banging on his shield yesterday trying to quiet the crowd. Uh, and he's just like, he's not stopping. He sees you from about 20 feet away, try to like flag him down. He's just like walking past you. He kind of gives you a quick nod and he's like not making eye contact anymore. And he's almost muttering to himself at this point. Um, pretty anxiously uh well i'm gonna follow him and keep talking and be like uh was it yarman uh yorman 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 uh yorman we were at your town meeting this morning and they were looking for you yep, yeah that's great mm -hmm. yeah i bet they were uh just uh need me everywhere i guess i gotta solve all these problems like i'm the one who's gonna do this stuff like that i did not sign up for this job, for these problems, I just want, and you know what, who am I, I you just, whatever, and he just keeps going, he's just like, moving and grooving. I'm gonna keep walking behind him, and like, uh, Yorman, uh, they're not all your problems, we're here, we're gonna take those problems, so tell me what the problems are, so we can help, and take it off your plate. Yeah, great, if you wanna deal with whatever creepy ass shit is happening in that tower, that's up to you, man, I don't know what you're about, and kinda eyes you up and down, he's like, I don't see what you're about. Uh, and he, if you want it, great. A few of the other guards are up there. Galio's nuts. Uh, and I'm just not here for that. I'm too old for this shit. I'm not dealing with it. And I've got other things to do than any of this. So I'm going to go back to my tent, uh, and my bed. And the growler can just kiss my ass. That's what I think. Yeah. I, well. I don't care about her. I don't care if she's some mean old gorf. I don't care if she's the leader, but the growler can just deal. Because I'm tired of her growling all the time. Tired of her yelling and mooping. Like, I've got things to do. Uh, half my damn guards died to some water creatures. This is some bullshit. Well, <clears throat> lucky for you, uh, oh, I'm gosh. in some creepy ass shit. So, we're going to take care of that tower. Uh, so, you don't have to worry about that. Just give me, like, a heads up. What are we, what, what are we looking at up there? Like... Zombies, like vampires. Listen, I, I, I think at. I made this real damn clear. There are other people right. up there. Unless you need anything <laughs> else specifically from me, they can handle it. I've got other things to do. Number one, sleep. <laughs> Number two, sleep. Number three, things I don't want to tell you, but I do them by myself. So I'll see you later. <laughs> all right. Well, you have fun, uh, Jorman, with all that. See ya. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go... Uh, I don't even know. What do the young kids call it these days? I'm going to go read a scroll and chill. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that right now. Read a scroll and chill. Yo, I need... Pause. I need a t-shirt that says read a scroll and chill. Like, let's just be real right now. Uh, we'll, we'll make that one happen. We'll add it to the, to the merch list. Uh, oh my god. So you get the sense... Uh, roll, roll an inside check for me. Um... Jesus. Read a scroll and chill. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. You just, <laughs> can't even. I got 16. 16. Um, you get the sense that, like, this bravado and annoyance is more of a guise. Um, and that really, the sergeant is just kind of a cowardly chicken shit. And, like, mm. doesn't want to handle any of these problems really signed up for this job thinking it was going to be more of a 
administrative, I'm going to tell people what to do and like stay in the tent for the most part type of work. Um, and it's like not about actually doing anything um, based on this reaction. Because um, he looked pretty unsettled. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I could I could smell the fear and sadness on him. Hence the Rita scroll and chill. So I'm going to walk back over to everyone else, to my fellow long swords. Uh, and be like, yo, can you believe this guy? He just told me he's going to read a scroll and chill with all this shit going on. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not opposed to reading a scroll and chilling, but you got to pick the right environment. The right time is not the right time. So sounds like there's some creepy ass shit up there. I told them we were into creepy ass shit because we are. We're creepy. We're into some weird shit. So let's go up in that tower. I heard Galeo's up there. There's some other guards up there. Uh, he looked pretty rattled, but he's kind of a wimp, so... I think we should probably go check it out. Yeah, I think we can handle it. Let's go figure it out. All right. Cool. Um, so you guys start walking back up the switchbacks that kind of lead up to this tower. Um, can I have everyone roll a perception check for me? Wow. Look at that young 20. Dude. Yo, that 23. Uh, who got more than 20? Me, yeah. I did. I did. Um, so anyone who got more than 20, off in the distance, there are some hills that kind of surround Leylon outside to the, um, to the uh, what would that be, the, the east. Um, and, and just above one of the hills, a little bit outside of the Palisade Wall, you can see a figure. Um, and you can, you can make out some details, strangely enough, even though it's at this distance. Um, and it seems to be a, a woman in armor with a sword. Uh, and uh, like chainmail armor, um, and uh, as you kind of walk up the hill, you see her just kind of almost vanish. She's not there anymore, and then she seems to be um, up near the top of the hill, almost like this this figure wanted to get a um, closer look at you. So she kind of comes closer to the city, you can kind of see, and you don't know how she got that distance as quickly as she did and as she gets a little bit closer to the to the town off in the distance you can make out like this seems to be a um, well armored woman very strong very firm um, with like well armed and well armored um, and as you kind of like are looking off in the distance and you look back at the tower and then you look back in the distance trying to like refocus she's gone yo torn you see that you see that weird ghost lady checking me out over there dude nope no, you didn't see that? Yo, some uh, some buff-looking armored chick kept popping up over the hills, appearing, disappearing, <laughs> staring at me. You didn't see that? No, I didn't roll hmm. high enough. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> uh, I saw you intensely looking over there. Yeah, I think I think we had a connection for a minute over there. Then I lost her. Maybe she'll come back. <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> all right cool all right anyway well up to the tower <laughs> uh so you do start making your way up in up kind of up there and up at the top of the tower um are three of those other guards that um sergeant yoram kind of pointed out um two of them are uh human one male one female and then um the central one uh is a um is a dwarf male um, with a pretty trim knit beard, which is strange for a dwarf uh, in these parts. Typically, they're pretty long. Um, they all are wearing the the livery of Neverwinter and the emblems of Neverwinter. So you assume these are part of the guard contingent that was sent here. Um, they all seem very shaken uh, and pretty scared. Hmm. <clears throat> Can you guys hear me? Got all quiet. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, must be Sluss's headphones cutting out the audio. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <clears throat> uh, hello, uh, guardsmen. Uh, yeah, that's we're guardsmen. Mm -hmm. yep, yeah, that's us. Uh, we're yeah. just um taking a break, citizen. No, oh, I just saw your boss. He's going to read a scroll and chill. You guys reading the scroll and chilling right now? What are you doing? The, the fucking guy, I swear to God, he's always just making a mess of everything. Uh, and the dwarf <laughs> is just, like, not about it. He's clearly at his wit's end. He says, uh, the, he's the only fucking person who just ran off like, like we didn't all see the ghost together, but we're still fucking here waiting. Uh, a ghost? You saw a ghost? 
Yes, a fucking ghost, okay? We saw a ghost. I know it sounds crazy, but that's what we saw. Is this your first time seeing a ghost? I've seen many ghosts. You've seen many ghosts. Well, go take care of that fucking one so we don't have to deal with it. Did it attack you or anyone, or did you just see it? Did it appear? I didn't wait around to see the fucking ghost. I saw the ghost. I didn't want to attack it, and I left. <laughs> <laughs> who who stays to fight a ghost? Besides, you didn't <gasps> see what that bastard brought with him. He had other things in there. They were gross and disgusting. Oh, yeah. Well, that appears to be our specialty. We're the long swords, if you haven't heard from us. So we're going to go... <laughs> <laughs> we'll go. We'll go take care of these uh, ghosts and creepy things. Just point me in the right direction, man. No, no, there's no way I'm letting you go in there. Okay, I don't know what you're about, but you certainly don't seem like a bunch of ghost killers. I agree, you look creepy and disgusting, but I wouldn't say that you're. <laughs> uh, it's, it's all capable of doing any of these things. <laughs> Listen, we've killed many a creature, including a dragon, together. We can handle some ghosts and monsters in there, I promise. Yeah, I'm certain. I believe it from everybody else but you. Nothing about you screams that you could take care of this thing. Uh, so, yeah, maybe if, um, you know, the, the the lass with the red skin and then the uh, cat lady purrs it a little bit, they might run off. But I don't think you're really suited for this. Listen... <laughs> Big things come in small packages. Don't don't be deceived over here. I can I can hold my own. Boy, you're talking to the dwarf. I know damn well what things come in small packages. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> listen, I can I can kill a creature, and I'm I'm gonna kill these creatures, and I'll 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 bring you back the proof. He says with all the confidence in the world. Lads, would you talk to this man and just tell him a little bit more of what's going on at least before he goes in there and gets himself <laughs> killed and the rest of whoever the fuck these people are. Uh, and so, Laz, you kind of hear his name is the other uh, male in the group and he um, tries to like settle down his comrade who's clearly losing his goddamn mind. He says, listen, um, we're all clearly shaken up. No one of us expected to see some old transparent dude with like wild hair and flaming eyes walk through walls in there um, but we were just doing what we told helping Galio work on the tower making sure things were good um, and he just it was getting later in the nighttime, and we didn't even notice at first um, our swords went missing some of the tools were gone. We heard scratch, scratching all along the walls. And then this ghost just starts walking down the corner. Um, charging at everyone. Galio refused to leave. He's still up there. We told him it is not clearly safe in this place. Um, there was this other creature that I, I couldn't even tell you what it was. It was terrifying though. And I don't think it's a good idea. Um, to go in this tower at all. Where is Galio right now? Uh, last we saw, he was in where he kind of set up shop, I guess, up at the the, the top floor. Um, I, I I'm sorry, but I I just we, we're not going to be able to go in there and check on him. If you want to do that, that's fine. Um, from what I heard from the Growler, sorry, from what I heard from Griselda, please don't tell her I said that she is not fond of that name. Um, just, just, uh, she said you guys, you know, helped us with some other battles um, before uh, the last couple days. So if, if you do feel capable, sure. But I would just recommend if you see anything weird happening, you, you get the fuck out. Because we're not coming in after you. Not until whatever is happening in there is done. Gotcha. Well, I appreciate the heads up and the concern. Um, you know, we, we spoke to Griselda and we're going to be here for the long haul helping you guys set up this town. And part of what we're here to do is to help uh, have these weird battles with all the weird, crazy shit that is happening in town that seems to be stemming from the tower. So uh, I think I think unless my group uh, doesn't want to, I think we're going to go in there and check it out and try and get a hold of Galio because we need to talk to him. We do. Um, so, um, for everyone but Seducius, because Seducius has been having most of the conversation, I would like you guys to roll an insight check for me. Uh, 
and let me know what you got. I haven't gotten the, the chat up. Oh, I got seven. I got an eight. And then Zendry? Nineteen. Um, so <laughs> Zendry and Torin, um, you do notice that most of the talking is happening from Laz, the, the human male guard, and then the dwarf guardsman. Um, but the female guard seems to be very reserved and is, like, refusing to look up. Um, and every time um, they mention Gallio, um, you, you noticed that she kind of shuddered a little bit. Hmm. Hmm. What is your fear with Gal- Galileo or whatever? Gallio. Gallio. What's your favorite thing? You seem a little, <laughs> a little shook over there. Oh, yes. Yeah, what's going on? You're talking to, to her now? Yeah. Yes. Um, well, it's it's nothing. I don't... Um, like they said, there was a ghost, and um, he just... He was acting very strangely the last few days, and I know he's been pouring a lot into his, his work. Uh, I'm certain it's important. It was a sign from Lord Never Ember himself, from what I've heard. Um, but he's just been acting strangely and he's certainly overtired. I don't think I've seen him sleep in the last however many days we've been at this. Um, and I, I saw him the other night. He was walking through uh, the hallways in his nightgown, of all things, muttering to himself. It just the whole the, the whole thing just has me on edge and I, I'm sure I'm just seeing things. Have you ever seen anything like this happen before, or is, was this the first time that you've seen him that way? Uh, I mean, it's the first time I've seen him that way, but uh, others of the workers have mentioned it. Um, we just all thought it was Galio pouring into his work. I mean, it's normal for anyone who's passionate about a subject to, 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 to maybe overextend oneself. Uh, but now that we've seen what we've seen, I'm just concerned that something is happening. Mm. Hmm. Well, keep us posted if there's anything else that goes on. My friends and I are going to go take a look at things and try and uh, try and see what's going on around here. So if anything new happens, keep us updated. Um, yeah, we're just going to um, maybe stay like uh, closer to the camp if that's... Um... Okay, and she's not even really asking for permission. Her and the rest have already started walking down the hill. <laughs> so they're like, not going to be around this. Um, you just uh, tell the Sarge if you need us again. Uh, and then I'll kind of walk off. Uh, Pleasure meeting you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> um, so you are uh, outside this huge tower kind of hearing these things. Do you guys want to uh, discuss anything or um, communicate at all before you... Uh, enter into the space. Yeah. What's the plan, y'all? Yeah, it think sounds about, like this is real dangerous. <laughs> yeah, I think you're about to walk into some shit. Mm hmm. Um, safe words. Are we, uh. <laughs> safe words? Any escape plans. Obviously, we don't really know what the inside looks like. We don't know what's going to happen, but. What's the deal, y'all? <clears throat> this sounds like one that we should probably plan something for. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Mm-hmm. I agree. Does anyone have any, like, protection spells or anything in their arsenal? I know I saw some when I was looking at stuff. I don't know if anyone has picked any. <clears throat> Let's see. I could do, um, I've called, it's called Pass Without a Trace. It's a veil of shadows that silence a radius from you, masking you and the uh, companions from detection. Mm. It, and it lasts an hour, so basically like, it's like Harry Potter. Yeah. I was thinking, I was thinking like something like that, or I could also go in alone and scope it out and use my invisibility spell and just kind of take a peek and see what's in there and come out and tell you. I also, I also have the um, those sending stones that are like those walkie-talkie stones. 
We can always give you one. Yeah, one of us could give you ours. And Mm -hmm. you can have one and we can have the other so you can scope it out. Mine is able to, I think, do it to all of us so we could sneak in, I think. Hmm. Yeah, if yours does all of us, I mean, that might be also good. She's within 30 feet of you, including you. Has a plus 10 bonus to dexterity stealth checks and can't be tracked except by magical means. That's the only bad part. Mm. There's probably magic in there. But still might be good to like get in there and look around or if you want to full send by yourself, that's or maybe just Sorry. Yeah. There no, you go. I'll just say it, it could be like two of us or something. I don't know. Three of us. Just someone not all like dead instantly. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so not, yeah. Not dead, but also splitting off has not been a good idea this whole uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. journey yeah. either. Hey, uh, uh, yeah. Dungeon Master, how how effective would Detect Evil and Good be, even if we know there's some weird stuff going on in there? Um, Let me check. That's one quick thing I want to double check on the spell. Um, and then while I'm doing that, can you roll a, since it's your cleric, um, can you do a religion check for me? And I can give you the mm-hmm. detail on whether or not it would be helpful. 13. Okay. Uh, where are you? A detective. Good. Uh... Uh, you get the sense um, that it could be helpful if something is within range of the spell. You just know this is a pretty big building, and you don't know the spell is about thirty feet. Um, you just, you know, so yeah. you, you get the sense like if there is a ghost, you do know that ghosts are considered undead creatures, uh, and this this particular spell would help you um, pick up a bit more of where it is. Are we already, are we right outside of the tower right now? Currently, yes. Um, which actually means you can see some things. Um, ba, 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 ba. Let me get it loaded up, in fact. Okay. Okay. All right, so you can see this portion of the first floor. Um, as I said earlier, there are two kind of archways that open into it. Um, and you can kind of see uh, inside it a bit, which is really just a cleared out, ruined area um, that uh, kind of opens up into the, the main floor uh, of this space. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, and then again, there are the scaffolding, um, like the wooden scaffolding you can try and climb up on the outside as well. I mean, technically we could go to the top and then drop in or... Yeah, I was thinking the same thing, like just climb up the scaffolding, right? And you do know that Galio is up there. Um, while you guys are out here talking though, you did, uh, you did notice, um, that, um, like... Oh, like as you kind of looked at the building, you didn't really notice it at first, but every time you look back, you start to notice these like these lot these dark lines on the ground start to grow, and then you kind of like look back and notice again, and you notice that it's like insects, and they're just like fleeing this building. <laughs> okay, well that's not creepy. <laughs> um, are, are there any spiders fleeing then? Yes, okay. several. Feels any okay. insects you think of? Insects, arachnids, all of the above. They're all just yeah. like escaping as much yes. as I just yes. literally yeah. shivered right now. Like, I just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I could, talk, uh, I could talk to him. It's like a scene from Ghost. <laughs> you could. That is a skill that you have. Yeah, that's true. Like, are you running away or are you. Well, yes, they're running away. We know that. They definitely no. seem to be fleeing. You can tell this at that point. They're fleeing from the area? Yeah, they are like GTFOing from the. From the town. Wonderful. They are okay. scurrying well, towards Seducius. <laughs> no, 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 no. They don't seem uh, to have a, a direction to head in. There's just a way. 
Maybe we should just go to the fourth floor and talk to Gal Galio. Like from the outside, straight from the up, or, or do you want to like try to work our way up from the inside? I, I, I think we should talk to Galio first before we try and fight whatever effed up creatures are in there. I think we're gonna get our asses kicked. Where's Galio? Mm -hmm. uh, we last think at you the heard top. from yeah from the guards, he was, he was up at the top. Which okay. there could still be other things out there. Who knows? Yeah, I know. I know. What do you guys think? Should we try and go to the fourth floor? Should we use like torn spell and all kind of sneak in? To this room, hopefully undetected together. Mm. Mm. It's tough. I mean, we could try the outside since maybe that's how he got up there, and he still hasn't been inside all the way. The other guy. Dude, I, bet, I bet. I bet he was in there. I bet he caused all this effed up stuff. <laughs> Yeah, let's go to the fourth floor. Let's try to climb the scaffolding and go to the fourth floor. All right. Yeah. The music playing sounds like your song. <laughs> I had to pause for a second. I was like, wait. What song? My song? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I just kind of sound like Starlight. Cop copyright infringement. No way, we're gonna Nate's gonna start mm -hmm. running ads for Chaos Sirens in between all of our sessions. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I mean I might. Why not? <laughs> Fuck it. Yeah. Um so you guys so, are climbing up the outside? Yeah, let's go for it. Sure. Um so you guys climb up the um scaffolding. Um it's a bit of a climb. Um uh the good news is the scaffolding does seem stable since it was kind of freshly built and um, doesn't seem to be uh, as dangerous as possibly walking through the inner portions of the unstable structure would be. Um, so you, you do actually make it up to the top floor relatively easily, just going up the ladders one by one. Uh, and as you get up um, to the top floor, you notice that the, the space is completely open um, to the top. The chamber um, you know, clearly housed something, but it's a bit eerie as you kind of like finally climb the last ladder and walk in. Um, up at the very top is a crane right off the edge of the scaffolding meant to kind of lift things from the ground or take things down. Um, most of this top space, like I said, is, is cracked and destroyed. Um, what is creepy about it, though, is that there seems to be prisoner cells lining the walls. And the, 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 the bars are, like, broken and almost torn asunder. But they're all pointing outward, almost as if whatever was being held in them burst out. Um mm. And in uh, kind of you see that throughout this space, there are um, piles of rubble and debris um, from the broken walls and things. Uh, and uh, there seems to be like a central circular area, um, like something was there. But um, let me, in fact, show you a bit more of what you see in this space. Um, so this is kind of the top floor that you see. Uh, and in the central area, kind of looking around um, through debris, you do see a um, gentleman, a uh, human male, uh, in, in nice robes. Um, but the robes are pretty disheveled and dirty. Clearly, he's been working in this area for a bit and hasn't taken um, care of what his presentation looks like. His hair is pretty uh, messy and, and all over the place. Um, and he's got, like, deep bags under his eyes, um, ink stains all over his clothing, and you look at his hands, and they're just stained purple from the ink that he usually uses to write with. Oh, I'm Arthur. assuming this is Galio, right? Let's yeah. Go. go see him. Yeah, let's go. Let's go talk to this crazy bastard. <laughs> Uh, and before, like, you can, like, open your mouth to speak, he does kind of hear you and see you walk through, and he kind of, like, quickly, like, jerks back in your direction. He says, Ah, oh, finally, there's, uh, are you the new workers that are supposed to replace the people that were left? The cowards, the, all of them. Uh, who cares about a ghost? Uh, there's wonderful discoveries to learn. <laughs> uh, you must be Galio. Indeed, I'm Galio. Are you here to work? Because I have several things to do. Um, there's still rubble uh, blocking off most of the entrances on the third floor. Uh, who knows what's happened to the planar beacon at this point, and I, I, I'm still trying to figure out what's happening in these cells. 
Ah, yes. Well, Galio, uh, I'm Seducius, and uh, we, we're not here to work for you. We're here to figure out what's going on in this tower and uh, help protect the town. And it seems like a lot of weird shit's happening in this tower, man. Uh, sure. There's many weird things. Solve it if you need to, but my main priority is getting people back to work. If that means solving whatever made-up phony dilemma they're having currently, then fine. So be it. Um, I just need the soldiers to return, and I need the workers to return, so they can clear out this place, and I can get back to my studies. Uh, well, bad news, good news. The other soldiers are gone. Uh, the good news is that we're here, so what were you going to have the soldiers do? Uh, overall, the muscle here, some of the workers would help as well, but they would also just make sure that people were doing as told. Um, whatever soldiers do, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, it sounds like they got really spooked by some ghosts and creatures, and I heard maybe someone died, uh, and we're here trying to figure out what that's about. Oh, are you actually interested in my work? Because I'm happy to talk about it. <laughs> uh, yes, please, tell me, what exactly is it that you're doing here, Galio? Uh, it's, it's actually very interesting. Uh, so, um, it's actually the whole reason Leylon almost disappeared off the map. Uh, hundreds of years ago, Thalavar, wonderful magician, knew some of the deepest secrets of planar projection uh, and traveling between dimensions. Uh, and his whole um, philosophy was that we could bring creatures into this space to capitalize on their benefits, to use them as beasts of burden, to, but to also just understand the, the, the makings of the material plane. It's, it's quite fascinating. Um, you know, as some of us tend to do, he got a bit overzealous and wasn't quite aware of what was happening. Um, and um, he may have, uh, his experiments might have gotten a little bit away with him, um, and uh, some of them got loose, there was some kerfuffle, whatever, unimportant things, um, and in general, um, he was um, uh, essentially uh, refused to allow any more experiments to happen, he didn't quite like that, he would locked himself in this tower, uh, and for the most part, people avoided it. Um, until, um, they got out again, and then, um, the spell plague happened, uh, and it exploded, uh, and then, you know, uh, what, what tends to happen when, uh, wanton magic happens everywhere, um, uh, the, the rest of his experiments descended on the town, destroying everything, it, it, destroying the tower, blowing up half of the town, uh, and just letting loose tons of terrible beings, uh, and, um, magical creatures, uh, on the citizenry, uh, and so the, um, the, uh, the, the guards of, uh, Neverwinter and Leylon joined forces, cleared out the rest, um, and destroyed the tower as you see it today. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, but my studies really focus on less about that stuff and more about the, uh, planar beacon that he, uh, he built. Um, and we're incredibly interested in seeing, uh, what benefits that could create uh mostly though it's containment certainly containment um we wouldn't want to be uh rebuilding that um for safety of course as interesting as it might be um yes safety tell me again what does the beacon specifically do well it is um it's a beacon like a lighthouse it signals and connects several different uh planes of existence uh and allows um possible travel of one creature of a kind to another. Um, but again, that, huh. that exploded, and the, the rumors are that Thalavar, you know, died in that explosion. Interesting, interesting. Um, you don't think any of this is a little bit dangerous and it might cause undue chaos in what you're intending? Mm, well, I think um, looking at you, we probably have the same philosophy on this. No risk, no reward. Um, <laughs> all endeavors require some bravery to learn new things uh well listen you're not wrong uh i also heard you know from some of the guards you were acting a little strange and uh, a little concerned that you're getting influenced by the beacon heard you were walking around in your night robes or something the guards want to know their asses from their elbows this is how i work i am focused everything is fine uh i might be a little bit lack on sleep but aren't we all when we care for the work we have in front of us things are fine Okay, what's in the room that they didn't want to go into? Because we want to go in that room. What's in there? What are we going to find? Oh, uh, well, we haven't quite mapped all of this place out, but if our previous blueprints are correct, that is Thalavar's bedroom. Um, okay. And uh, it so far has still been sealed behind rubble, uh, and we have not been able to um, 
to get into that space uh, at all yet. Uh, and I was hoping that we would have the workers back so that we could actually get in uh, and find out what's actually happening in there. Yeah, well, I think that burden's going to fall on us uh, to go figure it out. Great. Um, whatever is happening, solve this problem for me. Uh, I'm tired of dealing with most of this <laughs> nonsense anyway. Who's laughing? I don't know, but they sound... It's great because it sounds creepy. It does exactly. sound creepy and it sounds like uh, it's coming from the tower. It's my daughter, I think. <laughs> oh, gosh, it's so funny. <laughs> laughing at the dog. <laughs> it's so funny. Um... All right. Well, listen, uh, Galio. I hope I hope we don't die, but we're gonna go check out this room. Uh, is there anything else you think we should know before we go in there? Um, just in case what they're saying happened happened, um, I might just be conscientious, um, exploring um, the location. Um, you know, uh, and I'm sure they would probably need. Um, some type of validation that whatever is happening is done. Um, but quite frankly, it's the middle of the day and no one has reported anything seen other than nighttime. Interesting. Okay. Well, uh, trust and believe that we will report back to you with any weird shit that we see. Great. Okay. Well, uh, are you going to be up here whenever we're done? Or I'll do you around roam around the tower? I'm exploring some of the other places. I'm certainly trying to still accomplish what little work I can. Um, but, um, you know, uh, mind your footing. Some of the floors are unsafe. Um, but you all appear to be relatively competent. I'm sure you can figure out where the soft spots are. Actually, one of my hidden talents, actually. So, yes, we will explore and find the soft spots. And kill these monsters. Great. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, unless you guys have any other questions for uh, our friend Gallo here, I think we've got some work to do. Let's go. Okay. Well, see you, Gallo. So we go back down to the floor one, or <laughs> should we bust through? Um, so want to go top down? In the rest of the space, you do see again that there are like. There's a lot of rubble that's been kind of piled high. Some of the rubble, though, looks like it's been there for ages. So you get the sense that a lot of the area on this level hasn't been cleared off yet. This was probably one of the, the last areas they've been able to kind of really touch. There is a spiral staircase um, to the northwest that does descend downward. So you could head down to the floors below um, uh, from here as well. Or you can go back outside. It's up to you how you want to proceed. Hmm, well, high risk, high, high, risk high, high reward. Let's just go top down. <laughs> yeah, let's go down that staircase. <laughs> Hopefully it's not each level of the tower gets progressively harder, so we're going to start with the hardest. <laughs> um, roll a, um, uh, who, what's the marching order, I should say? Who's going down the, the stairs first? So do you uh, Fuck it, I'll do it. Okay. Yeah, I'll, go down there. I'll go down there with you. Yeah, for hey, less than Seduceus, roll a uh, perception check. Don't worry, Zendri, I'll protect you. Thank you. Like you always do. Alright, let me switch over a second. Bless got 21, I got 12. Uh, so both of you do hear, like, um, water dripping in the background, off in the distance. Uh, just bloop, bloop, as you walk down these stairs. Bloop, bloop. That's what we hear. <laughs> bloop, bloop, bloop. <laughs> Oh my um, god. And as you walk into this kind of <clears throat> next level, as you walk down, you do see it kind of opens up into a bit of a hallway. Uh, and true to um, what uh, Galio said earlier, um, this space is still pretty heavily covered in rubble. Um, and it's pretty tough um, to see a lot uh, of what else you can get into. You assume that this kind of blocked off area was the bedroom he was talking about uh and it is pretty pretty piled high um throughout this area you do see that like water has dripped in and there are puddles um kind of throughout on the floor from the ceiling above um that's kind of been like opened up um 
but for the most part, it's um, it's almost entirely collapsed. Um, there's just tons of debris and rubble um, that has um, uh, kind of blocked off the rest of the hallway up here. Uh, and like you can even see where the workers just like skedaddled. There's pickaxes and shovels just kind of thrown about, um, kind of left all over uh, these these rooms mm-hmm. in the back corner here. Um, as you kind of walk through investigating some of this rubble, Sless, you look in a puddle and you kind of like catch your face, and it it, it almost pulls you back into the puddle and you're kind of entrances this puzzle puddle puzzle puddle like grasps your attention and you look at your face in it and you just can't seem to. You can't seem to break away, and as you look at your face, um, it's weird because you don't you don't realize you're making the expression you're seeing in your reflection, and it's you just like screaming. And as you're screaming, your face is aging older and older and older until it's basically turning into like a corpse. Uh, and you're you kind of see it staring back at you with like eye sockets and these empty uh, or these eyes and like this really gaunt eye sockets staring back at you in like a desiccated corpse face and you kind of reel back as you see this uh, and you're kind of touching your face and you feel that it is normal you still feel your skin as it was and your hat is still there um, but you definitely got a bit of a start as you saw yourself age to death uh, in a matter of seconds yeah wow that's scary that's a classic Sedisius move and uh, this place is cool I like it already <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, Seducius, you need to check out this water. See, it's, it's, what do you, tell me what you see when you look in this water. Uh, okay. Uh, cool. And I'm gonna go and peer into the water. Um. Roll a. Just roll a straight d20. <laughs> How do I do that? In the, what do I do with uh, that? Exclamation point. Roll. Uh, one d20. Space like the on. number one? Uh, yeah. Number one, D, 20. Yeah, like this. Did it say that I got a one? Uh, it does. You got a one. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Amazing. So from... Uh, you don't <laughs> see anything in the puddle and you're like, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? Uh, and <laughs> from the... Um, from behind you, upstairs, from the area you just came from, you hear... Lord, I think that was injury. Yeah, it sounded like <laughs> it sounded ass. like you were from upstairs, from where yeah. your friends were. Yeah, yeah. meow meow. Yeah. Um, okay, is it just Les and I in the room right now? You're the only two that headed down the stairs, from what it sounded like. Oh, okay. Uh, well, Les, I just see my sexy looking self in this water, but <laughs> that was kind of <laughs> weird. Uh, I should probably go check out that noise. Celeste didn't hear that noise. <laughs> you didn't, you didn't, you didn't yeah. hear that what noise? meowing? I didn't hear it anything. It was like a, a meow. Like, Zendry was either dying or having a really good time, or maybe both. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't quite know what's happening up there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I didn't hear anything, man. Uh, okay, that's kind of weird, actually, dude. Um... You getting a weird vibe from this place or what? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it definitely was a little weird when I was looking in the water and I saw my face getting all old. So, but you didn't see that? No, I didn't see anything in the water. That's kind of weird. Yeah, I guess this place kind of uh, impacts everybody a little bit differently, huh? Yeah, dude. That Gal- Gal- Galia guy is crazy. Uh, yeah. As you guys are having this conversation, everyone here is this like. <sighs> Do, 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 and it sounds like these huge footsteps, just banging down hallways uh, and rocking through things. You don't see anything, but you do hear huh. these like huge, like lumbering, do, do, do. Hmm. and they, it, it defies logic, but they only sound like they're coming towards you. <laughs> um. <clears throat> How about we get out of this room? <laughs> <laughs> what, do you want to go back up? Uh, Is there not a way... Like, you can keep going can... down the staircase. I think we should just keep oh. going down to the yeah, but, mountain of madness. Maybe you can drive us. 
the room that's blacked out, we can't get to it, right? Because there's rubble in the way. Yeah, and it's like piled to the ceiling. Like you, you, can oh, it gotcha. out, but you get the sense it would take all of you probably like several hours to maybe Got even it. a day or so to really get all of this rock out. Um, like these are huge stones, part of the building. Um, and like you would need equipment. You would need to like have a team between you and the crane and a cart. Um, you, you'd have to take some time to clear out what's in here. Okay. Is it well, like maybe light we just... shining through or something? Uh, roll a perception check. This was a bedroom, by the way. Bedroom. Um, yes, from what Galio told you, it was it was thought to be um, Thalavar's bedroom, and they haven't been okay. able to get into it yet. Is, is this the same room the guards were scared to go in? Um, this is a different room. They didn't mention it. They didn't say. Okay. It, but you, okay. You, um, you aren't sure about that. Okay. I was thinking. <laughs> Technically, I could. I mean, are we really trying to get in there or not? Nah? It's up to no, I was just. I mean, if it's if it's piled up to the ceiling, then uh-huh. I think we should do like an investi- some investigations room down to any like weird things we can find. Yeah, I could always switch to like a tiny, 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 tiny animal <laughs> and crawl through the rubble. I don't <laughs> don't know. Do There's like light showing. <gasps> hey, what are what are the white things that we see on there? Like the they look like um, d- dumbbells a little bit. Yeah, those are the ladders between the scaffolds. Oh, okay, got it. Oh, look, we got our I first mean, spammer. I see that. I was uh, like, oh, now we're real. Now it's legit. <laughs> oh, wow. Want to become famous? Uh, I do want to be famous. That sounds great. <laughs> How do I reply now? <laughs> <laughs> what Big is follow that? Dot com. Yeah, nailed it. You see how they tried to prevent the bot, prevented the link uh-huh. from happening? Should I... Oh, should put like I, a space in there. Should oh. I gift him a sub? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is this, is, this, is this part of the game? We're experiencing some weird shit too? Yeah, the meta is happening. Yeah. 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 Sick. That's, um, that's probably Burnett. <laughs> I, would, I would not put a fast burnet to do that for sure. oh my god um all right well can i do like an investigation check in this room see if there's like just anything else that like stands out uh yeah roll an investigation check are you looking for anything specific um i mean i just want to see if there's anything left by like, any ancient or like any old like books or like relics or anything kind of unusual Roll an investigation check and roll a roll a straight wisdom check as well. Just oh, wisdom. Cool. Yeah, look at that. Roll the freaking two. That's great. <laughs> it's awesome. Uh, so investigation. Yeah, nothing seems really of value. Um, hmm. You do remember, however, as you were looking up and kind of getting your orientation right on how you were coming up, there did seem to be a window on the outside of this space um, that, um, what's the word, that uh, looked like it would have been right where the back of this would, that would have like gotten into this room. I see. On the outside of the building. But it's, it's three stories up. Um, the other thing that seems strange is you kind of like, did he guess? Maybe he had plans? You don't know how Galio knew it was Thalavar's bedroom. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, He's hiding something. I mean, maybe he already found stuff in this room that we need to look at and he, and he piled it up to block it uh no you get the sense like this rubble is truly here mm-hmm. no i, I it, think it's clearly from the building the floor above just collapsing on top of it i may i i bet you galio has things from this room that he already found and that's why he knew oh huh. uh okay so there's no other way out of this room we just have to go back the way we came Staircase uh, down, you can right? you can keep going down the staircase to the lower yeah. floor, oh, okay. or you can go back up, or you can get out to the scaffolding from here as well. 
uh, and go down that way as well. You got a few ways to get to the next the next few floors. So kind of up to you. How hey, you could go. could we get on the scaffolding and kind of climb on the outside to get through that window? Um, you could try it. Um, you know, you've got a few things that would would let you give it a shot. Up to you how you want to try it. Get all your rope and stuff. We could like tie it to you. Yeah, you've got some uh, things you could <laughs> try and be creative on. It's kind of up to you how you want to handle that. I could transform into something that can crawl along the side or something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah walk. transform into a spider and just kind of yeah crawl in crawl there. Crawl along there, and, and it's that way we know if there's anything even in there or not. Um, if I die because of this, I'd be really upset. Yeah, watch us get in this room, and we're gonna like encounter like the end game boss. We're supposed to like find like that's three the magic. Weeks that's the I mean, that's not that not necessarily what's gonna happen. I'm just saying that's the magic of this game. Is yeah, there there Go is no it. like level progression. It's <laughs> an actual world, and whatever ends up happening is whatever ends up happening. So we'll we'll figure this out together a little bit. Um, but what's the I say with you. I bet, I bet you there's gonna be something cool in there. All right, I'm gonna turn into a spider. <laughs> God damn it! Or I mean, I, you want me to pick a different animal, bro? You could be a spider. So I'm just not gonna snuggle with you tonight, okay? Is that entry to your turn? <laughs> or I could do like a scorpion, bro. I'm trying to snuggle with you or with Tori? With me. <laughs> yeah, basically he's saying now we're going to cuddle at night instead of him and Torin. Got it. Uh, <gasps> all right, so Torin, you're a spider now or something else? And are you like a giant one, a little one? What's the game plan? I should do a little one. So, Well, uh, I guess I'll do a giant. Kind of like the size of a dog or something so you can make sure you get through the window. <laughs> yeah, sure. I want to be able to make it through. <laughs> you can be like a regular spider. You don't have to be a huge one. If it's just a creature that you like see in the world, you can do that too. It doesn't have to be one on that list. Okay. Yeah, I'll just I'll like, Craig is like looking at his window to see if there's a spider coming through right now. <laughs> Literally, I have to like look around. <laughs> it's the easiest thing to add like fear tension for Seduceus. Just throw it in a bug somewhere. Yeah. Uh, it's so on your back. You'd be like. Can't you be like Charlotte from Charlotte's Web? Like, just be that cute little spider that like comes down and that cute little so, spider that births hundreds of spider babies that parachute okay. all over the place at the end of the movie, huh? <laughs> like little sperm packages just everywhere. Is it, is it your black widow? <laughs> but she writes nice messages. No, she's a barn spider. <laughs> oh God! I just want yeah, you to I'll imagine a... all of Charlotte Web's babies. No, please stop. <laughs> No. Uh, all right, so Torin, you are a spider. You do get out to the yep. outside of the building, and you start crawling on the side. You see the window, um, and it does <laughs> appear um, like um, openable or, or opened, I should say, um, like a little plane of glass kind of there, and there's a window frame you can go through. What do you want to do now that you see it? I'm gonna try to peek around, like go on the edge of it, and like look in. Um, so you look in. You do see. Um, a bit. Let me actually show a little bit more of what you see here, just so you have a view that you can kind of decide on. So you can see that it kind of leads into a bit of a hallway, and the hallway seems to go into another room space on the left. Mm -hmm. Wait, that's all we can see on the map? Right now, yeah. From From your okay. vantage point, yes. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, let me go inside then, I guess, and take a little... So you kind of like push into the window and... And then you kind of like... As you try to like start crawling in with your spidery legs. Um, as soon as you pass into the window, you almost feel like the shutter even in your, fighter, in your spider form. I need you to roll a wisdom saving throw. Wisdom! Uh, and because it's a mental thing, you don't have to use your spider stats. You can just use your wisdom saving Okay, nine. Nine. Um, you, you're like, what was I doing in this room? I'm not supposed to. No, I don't need to be in here. And then you just turn around and walk out. Like back on the wall, back to your comrades. Uh, and you turn back into Torin. And you're like, cool, what's up, guys? Uh, did you check out the room? I don't know. <laughs> 
<laughs> what happened? Uh, what? You're more like, what What do you mean? Check out what room? Oh, what do you mean? Yeah, what room? Oh. You have no recollection room. of what you were trying to do. Hmm. The room that you just climbed out on the wall and went in through the window. I didn't go to any room. I was just hanging out right here with you. Yo. Have you, have you, have you been drinking out of that bottle with the three X's I told you not to drink out of? <laughs> Only for special uh, occasions. Uh, yeah. <laughs> sure. Uh, what do you mean? What are you guys talking about? We sent you into the room. You don't remember anything about the room? Did you see anything? The room with all the rocks? How would I get in that room? Oh my god! All aren't right. you wondering why? Aren't you wondering why you're a spider right now? He's not I'm a not spider, spider anymore. He turned back to Torn. <laughs> oh, we did. Oh, whoops. Well, shoot, that was a waste. I ain't missing a spell slot. That is weird. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, well, okay. well, do you want me I, to go into that room? Well, we already tried. It didn't work. Can I? Can I try shooting? Try it again. Like, can I try shooting web, like outside there, and make it sticky enough to be able to crawl? You know, climb along the. How side? are you gonna shoot web? Are you a spider? <laughs> uh, he's got a web what? spell. Uh, yeah, don't you remember when I when I held up the dragon, dude? Yeah. Uh, you could definitely try. You'd still have to climb the the. You'd still have to try to like muscle and climb the web. It's still a vertical wall, but you could try. Right. It. It's an option. I'll give you um, a, an easier <laughs> skill check to try it. It's a clever idea. Okay, let's do it. Okay. Parker, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna fall three stories. To my uh, so you cast web on the side of the wall. You do have a whole area of web that you can kind of pretty easily like climb to go ahead and just do a quick favor and do a athletics check for me hey if i forget to pull my shoot when you guys have to come get me all right, all right. Oh, okay. <laughs> medic oh gosh <laughs> never roll it well uh <laughs> let me just check something you said roll an advantage right uh no i just said i was gonna lower the difficulty <laughs> i know <laughs> uh, although do you have inspiration from last time still I don't think you used it. Yeah, you still have inspiration. If oh, you I do. And use it again. Oh, Kinda okay. Like slip a little bit and try to catch yourself if you want to use that inspiration. Mm. Come on. Yes. Nice. Okay, so yeah, you do manage to catch yourself and like, oh shit, and like the stickiness kind of grabs your arm, uh, and you kind of like are hanging there like Stallone and Cliffhanger, and you're like, <laughs> grab back up and you shimmy back over, and you do see the window. Um, you kind of get like an arm loop through and you have it hooked in. You can kind of look into the window as well. You kind of like hang in there on your elbows um, through it as you see into the hallway. Um, you do uh, roll, roll, roll a quick perception check for me. Um, you actually still actually pretty easy to, to make out given how dusty the floor is. There are human sized footprints on the floor of this hallway. Um, they're also on the wall and the ceiling. <clears throat> Prince. Okay. So maybe Galeo can, uh, walk on walls. Assuming it's him. All right. But I made it inside, right? You have not. You're still outside kind of hooked on the edge. Oh, she's okay. Can I climb in through the window? Sure. So you climb in through the window, and as you kind of get through, you you land and kind of kind of then you stretch out, like stretch your arms out. Can you roll a wisdom <laughs> saving throw for me? So exclamation save wisdom or yep, yep exactly. Or just... right. So Ugh. you you're like looking around. You're like, oh, I'm not supposed to. What was I? Oh, I don't know. I, I think. Yeah, Seducius needed something. Let me go back out and ask him. Mm -hmm. And then you climb back out across the thing. Roll another athletics check for me since you got to climb oh, back over. Man. <laughs> and here's where you die. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. So you do slip and you are falling. Um <laughs> Oh yep. gosh. Is anyone watching <laughs> him as he like slips? Is, was anyone spotting him at all? 
Yeah, I see a big red asshole falling from the tower. <laughs> you're, you guys are like horizontal from him. So are you doing anything to try to help him? Is there an attempt here before he falls to the ground? Oh my god. Uh, I don't have anything. I don't have any spells to save. Who has a spell to save it real quick? Um, Torn human web. <laughs> I don't have web shooting. Use your butt rope. <laughs> Throw some rope out at me. I don't know. <laughs> uh, someone's got to try something. I'm going to give you like another 10 seconds to figure it out. Yeah, I know. Uh, Somebody throw some rope. Let me catch it. All right. I'm throwing rope. I got a 50 footer. Okay. So I need you to do a couple things first. First thing I want you to do <laughs> is roll an acrobatics check. Just, uh, actually, yeah, let's do this different. Roll a sleight of hand check to see if you can... Get it out fast enough. Ten. Uh, and then I'm going to have you also roll a athletics check to see if he grabs it and you can hold on to him. And then, um, Sless, I need you to roll an acrobatics check as well to see if you can, like, grab the rope as you're falling. In kind of midair. Twelve. Twelve on come that on, side of Come hand. on, come on. Uh, no, on the acrobatic. Nine and twelve. Or no, ten and twelve. Yeah. 10, 12. Um, so you are able to get the, the, the rope out. It's like, it was a little sudden though. And you weren't able to quite hold on to it. Um, so Sless has the rope in his hands. You have the rope in your hands. You've got it there, but like he's starting to pull you forward. And now you're starting to fall down the side of the scaffolding as well. <laughs> I'm going to grab, I'm going to grab Torin. All right. If anyone's <laughs> trying to help roll an athletic strike to try to dive on him before they fall off the side. All right. All right. <laughs> Athletics checks for the rest uh, of the group who's trying to do this. I got, got 20. 14. Hey, there we go. Okay. Uh, cool. Cool. Uh, so you uh, you are able to grab them and like, Celeste, you do kind of slide down a few more feet and just kind of poof into the side of the wall. Um, you take uh, 2d6 damage, uh, which uh, let me oh, roll okay. for you here real quick. Actually, I got it. You take Dummy. 6 points of damage as you slam into the side of the wall it was worth it <laughs> um, was it <laughs> yeah Torin, in your head though you hear these whispers um these kind of bodiless whispers that say drop him drop him drop him drop him drop him drop him oh that's Gosh. cool <laughs> let him go you don't care about these people drop him drop him drop him do you let him go <laughs> No. Do you let him go? Yes, I do. All right, so you to. drop him. Uh, you fall the rest of the like fifteen foot to the ground, and you take another. <laughs> Torin, I'm gonna mess you up here. as you land on the ground. <laughs> Eight yeah. points. Yeah, you are now on the bottom level. Um, the rest outside of the crew, though, right? Yeah, outside. The rest of the crew saw Torin let go. Torin. What the fuck, dude? You just let go of Sless. Why did you do that? You didn't hear? I had to. You told me it was him, right? Didn't you? Who? Who? What are you Who talking you about? about? Sless. We didn't hear anything. What are you talking about? I heard a voice that said, drop him. Oh my over god. And over and this... I thought he was telling me he, he couldn't hold on any longer. He wanted me to let go. Oh, yeah. I... I didn't hear that, dude. None of us heard that, dude. Uh, you know, this Zendry, fucking tower, man. You creepy. hear a, a voice in your head as well say, You can't trust him. You can't trust him. You can't trust him. He'll kill you too. He'll kill you too. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. That's dope. That's dope. Oh. Shoot, I'm about to yell from the ground. Like, somebody <laughs> push that guy off the ledge. Are you kidding me? <laughs> what the heck? I think, well, wait, I don't know what everybody else is being told and hearing, right? Correct. Nope. Damn. Well, Torn, that's pretty fucked up, dude. You better go down and get a healing spell on, on Sless. Aren't you guys the healers? Before he fireballs your ass, dude. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to light, light all eight of those spider legs up. Yeah, well, I'm going to peek over the tower and be like, Sless, are you live, dude? 
<laughs> my back hurt. You good? <laughs> uh, yeah, luckily some rocks too. broke your fall. So. Some rock. Why does a rock break my fall? <laughs> Break your back, dude. Bless, we're, we're, we're going to come about, down for you. <laughs> we're definitely going to try and save you, Celeste, but uh, I don't know about all of you, but this is very creepy and very scary. And I know that this is your thing, Seducius, so I hope that you have a good plan because from what I'm hearing is that there is something going on in here trying to control all of us very individually. Torin had no idea that he went into that room. That's a little bit creepy. Now he's being told to drop Sless. I don't know. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, I would agree. It is a little bit odd. And I heard, I heard you yelling, but you weren't yelling. No. Hmm. Yeah, this place is fucked up. Um. Yeah. I, uh, I'll figure out a plan. We should go get... We need to save Sless. And we go back and talk to Galio. And then we'll go back and talk to Galio, yes. And smack him around a little bit, because this is crazy. Yep, we sure are. Uh, alright. Let's go down and get Sless. Unless Sless can walk and you just want to walk back up scaffolding to us. That's fine. Are you doing down there? (laughs) I'm doing okay. I'm actually not hurt that bad, so I think I'm gonna climb up the scaffolding and come back and meet up with you guys. Yeah, why don't you? Fine. Why don't Are you, you sure this? you want to do that? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm about to have some words with Torin here real quick. <laughs> oh no. Uh, why don't you meet us on the top floor, Sless? We're gonna talk to Galio. Sounds good. I'll meet you there. Are you okay uh, to do that on your own? Yeah, I can make it. Okay. Which way are you going, Sless? Just so I know. The scaffolding. I'm going to climb up the scaffolding, yeah. Okay. Um, so you guys do make it back up um, relatively straightforwardly, um, back up to the top floor. Galio is not there. Of course not. A bastard. What the heck? Can we do... All right, I'm going to do like an investigation check around his area, though. I want to see if there's some shit we can find. Sure. Uh, yeah. Let me know what you get, because I don't have the chat open. Just a second. Yeah. Uh, I got an 11. An 11. Are you looking for anything specific or just like a general search through the room? Uh, right now just a general search in the room. Um, you don't see anything particular. It looks like most of this area has been cleared out. Um, you do notice though, um, that the rubble seems to be kind of piled in one particular area of the room from like the, where the, where it naturally fell. It doesn't look like the workers... <clears throat> And cleared it in this space. It looks like this is like where um, a lot of it um, kind of just fell inward, um, and that's kind of on the um, like the south side of the stairwell. But nothing, nothing that you can see special here. Okay. Uh, mm. Sandra, what if you do like your weird little empath feelings, good evil thing? Detect even evil and good. Yeah. Would that be beneficial if we if I cast that? That's a you decision, not a me decision. Well, let's try it. Okay. Um. So you do cast it. Um. You. Um. You don't catch anything. Nothing seems to pop up. Mm, ain't that some shit? That is just some shit. Um. I don't think I. I don't think I have anything else. Well. <laughs> I, mean, I guess while we were on the third floor, he could have he could have snuck down through the um, stairwell without us seeing. I guess, or he could have snuck down the scaffolding without us seeing. Yeah. So I go to the first floor and work yeah. our way up. Yeah. Right. Do you guys want to go through the stairwell, or do you want to go through the scaffolding? 
I feel like if it was Galaga, though, he'd probably go down the stairwell since he's into this place. Yeah. I feel like we should go down the stairwell and try and find him. Level two. Yeah. Uh, so you kind of walk down the stairwell, back down the third floor that you pass with all the rubble kind of blocking off that, that, that bedroom. Uh, and you do make it into the, the second floor. Uh, and it opens up into um, kind of a bit of a hallway stretch uh, that has several closed doors um, around it. And there are a few different places, um, like a few different doors that are there. Um, uh, that you can kind of uh, you can kind of see. Most of the doors are closed. Um, the first one is peeked open just a little bit, and inside you can see that there are like shelves and, and books kind of piled um, and kind of strewn about because it, the building for the most part was destroyed. Uh, but since this was kind of below the first couple levels, um, it's not as as destroyed or, or taken aback. Go through one of them, or just go all the way to the bottom. I think we should open these doors. Good. Left to right. Let's start on the right. Come. Okay. Um, so you, which one are you doing? The one on the right hand side. Oh, the one. On, yeah. Uh, the one on, like. Near the bottom, basically. So just, I think. You yeah, that one. Yep. Okay. Yep. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so you open it up, and again, you do kind of get a, a glimpse inside the room. Um, there are shelves pushed around each corner, and um, there are uh, books in a um, detritus just kind of strewn about. In the center of the room is a um, statue of what appears to be a, a little peasant girl. Um, <laughs> flux. And Zendri, can I have you roll a um, religion check or an arcana check, whatever you feel like most appropriate? Mm, I'm going to do arcana. Oh, I did too. Mm-hmm. I got a seven. I got a seven. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, you're not sure what this statue <laughs> is of. Mm. Okay. A little weird. A peasant girl? That's weird. Like a peasant girl, like a young girl, like a child? Uh, let me double check and just make sure so I can tell you the right answer there. Uh, yeah, like a like a young woman. <sighs> and um, she's like, she has a, um, she's making like a shushing motion with her finger. Oh, that creeps me out. Yeah. I want to get out of this room. That creeps me out a lot. Same. <laughs> yeah, that's that's dope. I like it. We should talk to her. What's <laughs> <laughs> that? Read that? a scroll and chill. <laughs> yeah, that's what she's saying right now. She's like, shh. That's, that's like a sexy shh. <laughs> God, <laughs> you sexify all things. Yeah, she looks to be like thirteen, bro. Chill. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I'm not into that. Let's get out of here too. <laughs> uh, so I we mean, to another room. Um, yes. Which one? Let's go the one like across from it. Okay. Yeah. Um. So you enter into this space, that one. and lo and behold, is another statue of the same girl with her uh, finger to her lips, shushing you. Another as you shushing um, statue. There are, again, more bookshelves in this space. Um, you can actually see that there's a. Um, some like n- notes that have been um, kind of strewn about the floor in it, like just a completely unrecognizable language. Um, looks like a cipher of some type. Nothing that seems like you could read. Can I use my protect um, evil and good in here? Sure. Please. Um, yeah, so I'll do that another again. Version of it. Mm-hmm. Nothing seems to register. Great. It's like a creepy, creepy library. Do me a favor, though, Zendry, since you're kind of investigating a bit. Um, mm-hmm. Roll a... Roll another um, Arcana check for me, now that you got a second chance at it. And since, you, um, since you've since you already um, done it once, I'll let you do it at an advantage. I got a 23. 
So as you're kind of looking around and, and you're kind of keeping your distance from the statue because it creeps you the fuck out, um, you do <clears> see that on its back seems to be some glyphs and runes. Um, but you hmm. notice as you look at it, the runes seem to have been like scratched through. Hmm. Can I go back and look at the other one? Sure. Um, you do the same. You go back to that other one. And it's the same. There are runes down like the spine of this young girl statue. Um, and they uh, they also seem to have been vandalized. Hmm. It looks like there's some potential information that was on the backs of these statues. But someone's gotten to them before we did. I wonder if it was our wise guy upstairs. Because you can no longer read them. Hmm. Galio, Galio. <laughs> I uh, think Galio is meddling with some magic he doesn't understand. That poor bastard is probably getting possessed by whatever that dude's name is who owns this tower. Franken, Frankenforth. Falamar? <laughs> <laughs> Frankenforth. Falamar. 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 It's only on Funny the enough, Falamar. it's on the map. It's on the map. Yeah, I was going to say, it's literally oh. right there. You can literally read it. Oh. Frankenweenie. Frank yeah. Um... <clears throat> There's yeah. more to explore, right? Right there? Is there a hallway or there's a hallway, it does go down a little bit further, for sure. Well, I love going in that room. Yeah, let's check out the other room and find another creepy uh, peasant statue. So as you all are kind of still tingling from this the creepy statues, mm. you turn a corner. Uh, and almost as you turn the corner, you're not so looking, you kind of turn sharply to the left past the bookshelf, kind of like rolling your eyes as you see yet another hushed girl statue. And um <sighs> you um turn and almost immediately bump into Galio, who is there uh, reading a book in that corner. And he reading? Kind of looks up, yeah, reading one of the books off of the shelves. Um, and um, you kind of like bump in and he kind of looks up and he goes, oh, um, well, have you brought the workers back then? Are we ready to <clears> begin <throat> the studies yet or what? Uh, You've Galio. been here for several hours. I don't know if uh, this is normally your type of work pace, but it's not quite the best. Listen, Galio, uh, you need to calm down because there's some weird shit happening in this tower. Some weird shit, and you got some explaining to do, my friend. Okay. I've, I've tried to explain everything I can so far. Um, it's <clears> not that I doubt the workers, but you know, the ignorant masses don't know that much. So they guess superstitions and all things are troublesome. Um, and again, ghosts don't necessarily do anything to us. Uh, so, what's the big deal? Well, the ghosts in this tower uh, were definitely trying to harm us and scare us. Uh, we saw weird reflections, we heard weird screams, we heard weird whispers in our head. My friend fell out of the tower, uh, almost got killed. Then the um, suggestion would be to get rid of whatever um, undead presence is causing these disturbances. Yeah, well, that's where we need your help, Galio, is because we need to figure out what presence is in this place because at every corner we turn, we seem to be getting misdirection and pushed away from anything we try and investigate. So how did you know that that bedroom was even Thalavar's bedroom? I mean, I it's like an empty much. bedroom. We haven't found it. This was actually his home. I assumed there'd be a bedroom. Have you found anything of Thalavar's? In this tower? Um, I mean, you're standing in his library. Um, several of his notes and his journals have been here. Um, we found um, some odd things here and there. Um, there are um, some remains that we found in other areas. Um, based on where they were, we didn't assume them to be Thalavar. They seem to be in the servants' quarters. Hmm. So have you cast any spell? Have you cast any of Thalavar's spells or read any like enchantments of his while uh, you've been here? Uh, no, um, and that's rather an ignorant thing to say. Thalavar didn't have his own spells. He used a device that he created um, to try to bring creatures here from other planes of existence. 
Um, I, I was hoping you would be a little bit more educated in these matters, but it seems as though you're not, so I'll try to go slowly here for you. Um, there weren't spells to cast. Uh, we were under the direction of creating safety here. Um, and overall, um, finding ways to make sure that the city of Leylon wouldn't fall victim to whatever calamity beset them when the tower first erupted. Hmm. Do you have any explanation for the young peasant statues? Oh, of course, they're rather interesting. They're actually, um, statues to the goddess Mistra, the, um, the goddess of magic, um, they, um, I would recommend that you don't mess with them. Um, we uh, did discover some troublesome runes on the back. They seem to actually activate um, if you um, uh, if you actually activate the glyphs, um, and they're a bit of a uh, b- 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 protection uh, from any would-be um, saboteurs or people trying to find out Thalavar's secrets. Um, so they they, mm-hmm. they actually come to life. Uh, funnily enough, he's an actual, an interesting man, Thalavar, quite clever. He gives you the warning in the position. Um, we, we activated one by mistake not that long ago and, um, attacked the loudest of us, hence why it's telling you to be quiet. Who is so responsible? I would leave them alone. Fair, understood. Who's responsible for, I guess, if you would, damaging the ruins on the back? To where you can no longer read them. I did that, but once I figured out what to do, I had the rest of the workers do it. With no consequence, nothing happened? No. From what I understood, they were a pretty simple spell. Just an easy glyph of warning. Nothing particularly troublesome. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, um, damn. And you're, you're still looking for that beacon, right? Uh, well, we're not looking for it. We know what happened to it. It exploded. It's gone. Um, we were hoping to be able to... Um, we were hoping to ascertain maybe a bit of its creation to ensure that there weren't any remnants of that trouble still. Hmm. You seem incredulous. <clears throat> I feel... Honestly baffled by the mysteries of this tower because there's definitely something creepy going on and I want to try and find the source of it Great. But it seems like the source could have been the beacon that exploded So I'm trying to figure out what still remains here causing all this weirdness. That's what's going on in my head uh, My guess would be superstition But <laughs> if the you're telling me you have you haven't seen anything creepy at all in this no. whole tower no. You don't hmm Hmm. You haven't heard any voices, heard any sounds? No, again, the underlings have said as much, and I don't doubt them. I just doubt whether or not they um, are accurate in their assessment of what happens. Again, you know the typical masses are rather uneducated. I just need them to move rocks rocks around so that I can continue with my studies. I mean, listen, just pretend with me for a minute. Just pretend that all... I'm willing to pursue this hypothesis. I just... Yes. So what would you do in our situation to try and uncover this <laughs> well, weirdness? I, <laughs> there is no weirdness. I'm trying to put myself in the shoes of one of the plebeians. Um, and the only concern that has been <laughs> arisen is when night falls. So I would suggest if you are trying to find something, nighttime might be the best uh, time to, uh, to look for it. Um, that's certainly an option. Other than that, I don't know if there are any other, um, abilities you have to, um, call forth, um, call forth an undead creature, um, uh, or speak with one. Um, I don't Hmm. know, um, Hmm. if you've spoken to the workers, perhaps they can give you a little bit more direction of what they've seen. Um... Beyond that, you know, this isn't quite my area of expertise, and I don't feel comfortable making too much of a suggestion without knowing further. So I guess my my question then would be that you know all the townspeople and the workers who claim all of these things that happen here and because of this place, but you haven't explored that at all at night? 
why would I need to? I sleep at night, um, or try to. Other than that, I'm studying on my work. Roll a, um, do me a favor, Zendi, because yeah. that question, yeah. I think, is like doubting his loyalties, so to speak. Roll a insight check for me. Oops. 21. You get the sense that he's not being 100% truthful on what he's sharing. Um, I need a favor for a moment. I'm going to see if this works. Hold, hold please, friends. Holding. Definitely. No, but I don't want to do that to me. That would be dumb. Yeah, maybe we should go back in that first room. Since they said something was actually in it. Okay, Zendry, can you still hear me? Yeah, that's creepy what you just did. Yeah. Uh, hold on. So, no one... Wait, why are I muted? What's happening? Me. What's happening? And... <laughs> okay. Just confirming. Can anyone hear me? Other than Zendry. Rad. Alright, so Zendry... Uh, with that, you actually get the sense that, um, that, uh, Galio isn't being 100% truthful. Um, you get the sense that, um, he has things he's purposely trying to keep from you. Um, you can't quite tell what they are, but it seems like he's purposely keeping distance on what he's actually here to do rather than be super forth forthful about it you've noticed that every time uh that every time he's like someone's talked about the beacon he's he's almost had to stop himself from actually saying what he's learning about it and what he's ultimately trying to do with it um which kind of clues you in that for whatever reason he's not just trying to keep the town safe he might actually be trying to rebuild it um, if you want to share that with others you can if you want to keep that to yourself you can. Up to you. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> you see Slash? He's like, I'm muted. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think I'm bringing everybody back now. Anyone who already suffered from arachnophobia probably... <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck are we doing? Was that... Please tell me that was, that was you, Trent. Who had that loaded up ready to go? <laughs> Dude, that wasn't me. Is that uh, you, Smith? So, we haven't had a chance to get the mechanic yet, but I'll share it with you. Sometimes when someone learns something and it's just for that player, if it's really telling, uh, I whisper it to a particular player so only they know it. So, at this point, that's kind of what happened. So, everyone knows. Um, but, uh, yeah, based on that, that's kind of what you take away. So who, who are you Zendry. talking to? Uh, Zendry. Oh. He was so confused. I was like, what happened? I thought something broke. I was confused at first. I'm like, what? I did put it in the chat. I tried to give you a little warning. Um, you did? I did. Yeah. Oh. Oh, I see. I also spelled here wrong, and I'm kind of judging myself, but it's fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, oh, look at that. Screenshot that. <laughs> There's so many other ones. And if if uh, Diana was here, I'm sure she'd make fun of me saying Earth again. But Earth is still fine. In either case. Like uh, I just quoted you. You can edit them. <laughs> so you can. Uh, it's whatever. If you fail, you fail. You Sometimes you just got to do redactions. It's whatever. Uh, so, Zendry, anything else that you want to ask or talk through um, before we um, continue on? Um, am I still talking to what's-his-face? Galio, uh, it's up to you. Yeah. If you want to share, if you want to talk to the team, if you want to continue to talk to him. It's kind of up to you. Yeah, I'm going to step away from Galio and just kind of talk to you guys. My my gut is telling me that he's not being honest with us about everything. Um, and I can kind of feel him de like deflecting. So I think it'd be really, really good for us to just pay attention to maybe the message that's being hidden right now. Um, because my intuition is that he's full of shit. And that's just well, what I have to say. Why don't we do some old-fashioned threatening and get get our boy Torn over here to get a little strangle action on him? <laughs> hey, Adam. 
I'll leave that to you guys. So what's the uh, <laughs> Do you want me to strangle him? <laughs> do you want me to strangle him? <laughs> A bear or something. Just... Oh, oh my god. god. I think we should just keep exploring then if he's going to be a little chode. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I haven't heard the. By the way, just a quick aside. I'm almost positive I'm I haven't heard the word "chode" since I went to college. Like and, that, and that, and that, so we're all on the same page. Is the most ASU volleyball team shit I've ever heard. Hundred <laughs> percent, bro. Do I say that a lot? Actually, yeah, well, maybe not that word. But... Uh, yeah. uh, speaking of Dane chode. Cook. <laughs> Right? Oh my god. Callback! Uh, Here we go, god. full circle, full circle. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, well... I mean, I trust Zendry's intuition that he might not be telling the whole truth. Yeah. Um, it's just if you want to squeeze it out of him, or just continue on in this tower. I don't even know, I don't even know what to do in the tower, to be honest. It keeps... I keep getting like, I don't know, deflected. <laughs> what time? Yeah. What time of day is it? Uh, right now, it's pro you've been in the tower for a while, and Sless took a while to recover from his fall, uh, <laughs> and kind of like slowly work back up the ladder. So it's probably getting like late-ish afternoon, three p.m., four p.m. You guys want to sleep here and just wait till the night? I no, was going to say to right? like. Stay here and see what happens as the nighttime comes, or because I don't think that us being, I mean, I don't think that us just checking it out right now is going to give us any type of insight as to what the hell to do to help. Um, so I guess as a, we just need to make a consensus on whether or not we're going to stick this out and see what the hell happens, or if we're just going to leave it and come back and eventually have to do it another day. A good idea because it might be different at night yeah as much as this place creeps me out i think we should do our best to stay here Oof. we still have a little more exploring to do too yeah yeah i want to set up yeah, a little, a little tent by the hush lady <laughs> no oh, just exploring second floor and finish, finishing off the area yeah well, that's fine. Let's go explore, I guess, and flesh out this tower. So where to, friends? Uh, let's go to that little sure. area. Yeah, that little area that's still blacked out across from where Gallio is. Uh, so this is actually like another portion of the library uh, room um, that was kind of on the outside and collapsed out. There's only one bookshelf of, uh, across the wall. Nothing seems to be of value here. You get the sense this might have been where the... Um, the statue that they mistakenly brought to life was because there is no statue in this space. Okay. Uh, and I'm assuming Can we get to that middle room? room? Yep, there's a door in there as well. Same kind of thing. It's another room with bookshelves and a statue inside of it. Um, you get the sense this was kind of how, as Gallio kind of pretty explicitly claimed, like this was a lot of um, archival and research area that Thalavar had hidden his notes and things along with uh, books and things he had picked up along the way. And he had guarded them with these statues. Uh, but fortunately, you did not mess with them too much and did not reactivate them. Hmm. I wonder uh, if there's information in any of these, like, like notes or books about the uh, the beacon that exploded. I wonder if there's anything that we can, I don't know, read or try to pick up on to see if we can get more information about that beacon. Check it out. Roll an investigation check for me, Fluxy. All right. Oh, I like that. Hmm. Fluxy. I'm about that. What we get? Uh, I got seven. Seven. Hold on one second for me. Um, so you, nothing else seems to stand out. You you do see a, a bunch of books. Most of them are destroyed. Um, the ones that are still kind of standing and like able to, 
that are legible. There's no titles on them. There's just like a series of numbers and random things that make no sense to you. And as you flip through the pages, it's just a, a, a discernible set of like pictograms almost. Like there's there's nothing in there that you can really discern. It's not in a language. Clearly was some type of cipher that Thalavar used to encode his notes. Um, and it seems as though even Galio has struggled, struggled to like discern a lot of information from them um, as he kind of parses through them. But he was reading one earlier, looking through it, so you get the sense he might be able to, um, but it just might take him days and days and days. All right. Um, <clears throat> no one has any, like, summoning spells, right? Or, like, weird, creepy spells? No? <laughs> Summon, like, animals. To find, but, uh... to find weird, creepy spells. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, what kind of summoning? I don't know. Like bring it to light and see them somehow. Yeah, when I was talking to Galio, he he mentioned that as a possible thing he would do, and didn't know if any one of us had any spells like that to Maybe. summon spirits. Yeah, see our like our kind of stuff. Yeah, you could always have a good old fashioned seance. Yeah, let's do Get it. Boys out. We still need to go to the first floor, too. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we have any spells. Yeah, let's go to the first floor. Okay. So you head down that first floor, and you do end up into that space. Uh, in this area, you do kind of see this is really the big entry hall. There are um, more puddles of, of rainwater kind of turned to mud as they mix with it, um, kind of down on this base level as well. Um, there are um, like little mm -hmm. nests in the eaves up above. Um, for the most part, the, the roof here is, is intact. Um, as you're walking down the stairway, though, who, who's going first? Me. Um, I need you to roll a dexterity saving throw. Perfect. Save dex. Save dex. Save all the dex. <laughs> I want that. <laughs> I want to save dex sticker. Okay, so as you oh, step, right. one of the steps just kind of like crumples below you just in, in age and damage. Um, and you're not able to catch yourself, and you do fall basically from the second store, story down straight to the first story. Uh, and you suffer from a 20 foot drop. That's 2d6. 10 points of damage as you really hit the ground mm. hard. Yeesh. Um, but you, you are on the first floor now. <laughs> <laughs> you got well. there. Uh, you actually ended up. Yeah, just right there at the base of the stairwell, based on where you fell. Kind of you crumpled through and then fell down the steps a few more and then landed. Well, Celeste, you're not the only asshole who fell today. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, I'm okay. Thanks for asking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, no one cares. It's like, okay. Stupid. No one else is falling We're just all trying to process what the hell is happening in here. <laughs> Don't take it personal. Oh my Are you god. okay, darling? Yes, I'm fine. I'm fine. Do you need my... me to come save you? Yes, come save me. I didn't I didn't land I didn't didn't land on my face, which is the most important thing, so Oh, that's the most important thing. Yes, and my crotch. And both are fine, so anyway. Uh yeah, I'm on the first floor. I don't know what's going on. Maybe I'll get eaten alive. She should probably, she should come down here. Save me. <laughs> Can we, like, hop this? Or is the stairs broken? Um, this, no, you can, yeah. you can walk it. Um, who's, yeah. who's going last down the stairs? I'm in the middle. Okay. I figured I was going, like, second or third after... Seducius. So, <laughs> so I'll, 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 yeah, I'll go. I'll go last. Okay. So I'll go a as you start to anyway. make like the way downstairs, um, you hear like a. It's really hard to put into words, but it's almost like a cascading, tumbling noise, and it's just like, and you're like, what the fuck? And as you look back, it's just this like wall of books, just bouncing and flinging off the walls, and they're just flinging themselves at you. As you're like, what the fuck, trying to get down the staircase. And, like, one of them kind of, like, knocks into your shoulder. And, like, as you finally get down the stairs, they just kind of, like, do, 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 do against the back wall and just kind of land to the ground lifeless. 
uh, all of a sudden as you finally make your way to the first floor. <clears throat> yeah. Oh my gosh, guys. Uh, I just got attacked by a whole ton of books just flying off the walls. Did you guys see that? No. Uh, if they Did looked up, that? they would have seen it. Okay, oh. so it wasn't just like in my head. Nope. <laughs> 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 I'm just... <laughs> Just try to figure that out right now. Um, this place is most definitely so, haunted with some spiritual beings. Yes. I'm wondering if... Why do I always forget his name has something to do with it? Galio. Oh, yeah? Okay, I'll put it in the chat. It might be helpful. Here, I'll it. Sometimes it's helpful to write it. Oh, you know what? Here, I Actually, have, I, I, I have yeah, a better idea. Put it on the map. I was about to say, we'll I'll just write it, right? it on the map. It's a good call. I'm going to write it in the I mean, excuse me. It's on the map, just so you know. Um, gonna write on the map. Yeah. <laughs> what did he call it? Franken what? <laughs> Galio. <laughs> and then Frank Frankenfurth. Frankenfurth. Yeah, there you go. Frankenfurth. Uh, just so you know, yeah. that's definitely gonna become a canon name for another character somewhere else. <laughs> yes. A million percent um, Frankenfurth will be will be returning. Oh my god. I don't know about you guys, but I, I'm not sure why they're rebuilding this tower. I think we need to blow this thing up. Yeah, I was thinking that too. Let's yeah. just use all of our fire. <laughs> yep. Burn it to the ground. Good God. It's like an ancient burial ground or something. <laughs> Jesus. I'm something tells me it. we couldn't. Dude, it's like the freaking. Probably not. What if Pokemon and all the hunters. And rebuild this place to host evil. Uh, are you trying to talk to Galio? He's not on the first floor with you. No, no. I'm talking to them. Oh, sorry, sorry. So, like, maybe we should... I don't know. I don't know. What do That's you guys think? Mean. Kill him. Kill him? Is that what you said? <laughs> Yo, Galio's so, probably some pawn. Uh, my guess is if we start to attack him, he's going to have some kind of special powers that are going right. to just tear us up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> we'll probably kill him and he'll come back. Right. I don't know why they're trying to rebuild this thing, though, honestly. Maybe we should just ask. <laughs> Maybe I'll ask him when we see him when we get back up there. Are you going to look around anywhere else on the first floor? Yeah, have we, like, uncovered all the first floor since I fell in there? About darkness. Um... So, yeah, I mean, as you're on the first floor, you can definitely see, like, there there is uh, a few open areas because there's not, a, that's not the show tool, sorry. Burp, 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 um, So there are a couple of open spaces as you kind of walk around. There's only one space that seems to be closed off by a door. Um, as you walk in, the area kind of to the north um, looks like it might have been a kitchen at one point. You can see that there are um, cooking, utensils here, cooking utensils here. Um, there are a lot of dust and rubble. Um, there is a hearth along the back wall as well um, that is, is cold, um, uh, and it kind of ascends a little bit, but the, the kind of chimney portion is also kind of collapsed and broken at this point. Uh, on the bottom floor does seem to be a, um, uh, a like a, what, what were likely the servants' quarters that Gallio mentioned earlier. Um, there is a, um, there is a, 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 a cot a couple of cots here, um, some rubble. Like, you can kind of see the beds underneath the rubble as if like the, the, the stones fell right on top of these, these areas. Um, as you kind of look at that too, you can kind of see that there are bones um, uh, kind of strewn about that seem to be pretty old um, near this, this bed that's kind of jutting out from the rock. Uh, Do the bones look human, or can, um, you, can we make out what it, they came from? It's hard to tell because you really can't see a lot of them. Almost all of it is covered. It's just like a tiny little, like a, a couple of fragments of bone that have been crushed and, and broken off. Um, you can spend some time to try to clear the rubble here and, and see if you can get a better look. Yeah, I think I might just... Just explore a little bit to see if I can get more understanding of where these bones, what, who they belong to. <laughs> sure. Um, so you, it takes you about a half hour to an hour or so clearing the, the rubble out of the space. It's getting later in the evening now. The sun is probably going to set in another hour or two. Um, 
and you, you are able to kind of see like that there there were humanoid bones here, but they are demolished, like just crushed. Um, the skull is in pieces. The jaw is completely obliterated. Most of the the, the body is is destroyed from the waist up. Um, some of the areas that were kind of on the the, the outer edges um, where the legs were are still kind of intact, giving you a clue. Um, this was a relatively small humanoid figure. I can't tell if it was human, um, but uh, if you want to roll a medicine check, I might be able to give you a little bit more. Okay. Uh, Sixteen. Um, so it does it does seem as though it was humanoid, but given the the way the leg bones look and how um, thin they are, um, they don't seem to be a child. But it does seem to be some type of fairy creature, um, which clues you in knowing okay. what you've heard about Thalavar so far, who was a human, um, based on what Galio's told you, what the other folks have told you in this space, um, what the priests of Lefander shared um, around the history. Um, you can put two and two together. This was likely a, a servant of some type um, that was likely a fairy or a fairy creature. Wow. Oh, pixie dust. <laughs> Anything else of value? Um, roll an investigation check for me. Six. Um, nothing that you find in here. Um, pretty openly, though, on the outside, you would see it without really um, seeing much. Um, on the table uh, in the front area, there are actually three packs um, that are on them. Um, and, um, on the, on the, on the packs is like a little, um, note, um, that very clearly says, um, worker crew shift three. Okay. I guess I'll go to the other room then. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry yeah. I didn't hear you, Torn. Are you opening the packs or are you? I, mean, I guess I could open those packs first. Sure. Um, so in, uh, inside the packs, you actually do see a, a series of supplies, um, inside the, between the three of them, there are three potions of healing, um, five healers kits and about 125 gold pieces amongst all of them. Uh, in that same note that says for worker crew shift three though, on the back is a little missive, uh, and it says, um, these goods are the property of Galio. Uh, and the workers, um, any who take without permission, are susceptible to fines and damages. Signed, Griselda, um, the the council member. Hmm. How's she gonna know? Take the money. <laughs> I mean, Galio's still here. He might know. Yeah, we probably shouldn't cross Griselda since we're trying to help her out. Uh, that seems, that seems bad. <laughs> <laughs> it usually backfires on us when we do that. I know. Yeah, that's the point. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's only 125 gold pieces. We don't. We don't need that peasant money. We know there's some uh, healing if we need. Yeah. Exactly. Um, as you're going through it, uh, actually, uh, Torin, roll a perception check for me, real quick. Six again. Come on. Did you have any, like, food on your persons? Like, rations or anything? Um, I have... Yeah, I have rations. So, um, have you feel a sudden, like, draft blow, like, on the small of your back, and it kind of shudders through you. Um, you notice that there were a couple of candles lit on these packs. And as you feel this draft, you kind of shiver and look back and the candles are out now. They're no longer lit. Um, as you um, kind of like shiver around, you start to notice like you're, you, you feel like a, a bit of a, like a trickle on your leg. And you look down and you see like there's dust running out of your pack. And you kind of put your hand in it and those rashes that you had, you pull out and they're just rotten and moldy and dust now as they kind of fall through your fingers. So those rations are gone and they've turned um, to dust, essentially. 
Uh, I'm gonna take some money then to replace his rations later. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> Uh, uh, yo, there's something spooky up in here. It just melted my food. Hopefully, y'all have some food. But I wanna, let's check out this last place. Okay. So you do open this up, and this looks like it's probably a makeshift study. Um, you actually can see there are notes here um, that that are actually written um, in uh, common. You can read through them pretty well. Um, you actually see they're kind of a, a, a bit of a desk that's kind of been set aside. This desk looks like it's newer than the rest of the building. Um, it's it's quite a bit less dusty. It's not damaged almost at all. You know, a bit of nick some travel. Looks like this was carried in a camp of some type. This looks like it actually might be where Gallio was doing most of his study and research. Um, on the desk, you can see that there are some of the same pages ripped in that, that pictographic language from the library. And next to it are some notes um, written in another hand that kind of like point out and say um, things along the lines of like planar beacon attached to ethereal plane, um, spell plague, eruption, um, uh, uh, Thalavar's body unfound. Hmm. Maybe it's freaking Thalavar's corpse. <laughs> Coughing all this shit. It would uh, not surprise me. Yeah. So. Well, what do you, do you guys want to just, like, do you guys want to take, like, a short rest and just, like, be here at night? Yeah, I guess so. Or do yeah. You, yeah, yeah, just do it in here, I guess. Yeah, do you, I mean, you guys want to just do it, like, right where we are on the first floor? Do you want to go somewhere else? Like, fourth floor? Or just freaking go to that? Hush, hush temple statues over there? I'm gonna go to the fourth floor. <laughs> I don't want to go back there. Bad balance. I don't want to. I don't want to go back in the in that library. No you way. Go, you want to go to the fourth floor, Torn? No, I don't, because Celeste has bad balance. No, oh, yeah. Well, then, <laughs> yeah. Let's just let's just sleep on the first floor then. Yeah. Like, would it, Nate? Would it? Would a short rest take us to nighttime? Yeah, probably at this point you'd get past sundown. Okay. Like right now, it's probably about like four o'clock, five o'clock. So an hour or two, it'll be nighttime for sure. Okay. Yeah, why don't, why don't we just do a short rest down here then? <clears throat> yep. I can, I can stand watch. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Celeste needs to rest. I want to rest too because I want to get my slot back. Okay. Um, so... Um, who, so are you guys taking a long rest or a short rest? Like, are you sleeping? Because a short rest, you don't have to sleep. You can just, like, chill. Oh. Like, a cool. long rest is what you might actually have to, like, sleep or if you're an elf, like, meditate or something where you're not focused on what's happening around you. Um, a short rest, you're just not chill. doing anything super activitous. Yeah, just do one hour short rest or whatever. But a short rest, you don't get your slots back, right? You don't get your spell slots back, correct. You, um, Do you need your spell slots? Did you use any? He cast a web. Um, and, um, Would you, I'm not worried about that, but I think Torin was worried about the... Yeah, that's all right, though. I'd rather not take a long rest right now. The short well, rest I, also wanna, I would also want to make sure you have like every spell available when it is nighttime, because we're probably going to get some fucked up shit. <laughs> I only use two first level spells, so I'm really not too worried about that. We take a yeah, rest though. What time is it? Maybe like three o'clock or something. Right. Two. I just want to remind everyone what happened in the last battle when we had like three waves of enemies and we were all like scraping our like cantrips <laughs> to try and be a water monster. <laughs> <laughs> that is very true. So we should have every spell slot available. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, how long is a long? Maybe, rest? maybe we should leave and rest, then come back. Then you can full rest too. Yeah. True. True. Well, I mean, should we go? Should we go back to the inn? We can. 
But I don't like what difference would it make to the long rest there or here? Do you need one or not? I don't need a. I just need to like heal my ten points of damage. But like, he just wants us all to have our spell slots. The only way that we're gonna be able to use everything that we have is if we rest long time. You um, yeah, and for for like the paladins and clerics of the group, and, and actually the druids, if you did want to change out what spells you had available to you, taking a long rest would give you an opportunity to do that. So if you feel if you feel well prepared, then you might not need one. If you feel like you want to reassess what you have, that's an option. I do. Stock up, stock up on your freaking necromancy over there. <laughs> the what? Yeah, let's let's long rest so we can necromancy. I'll I'll show it to you. <laughs> Gross. Fucking with the dead. <laughs> Fucking with the dead. <laughs> Are we uh, sleeping in the haunted house, or are we? I guess we are. Yeah. Uh, what can happen? Yeah. Everyone, <laughs> they mess with your head and tell you to do something stupid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If I kiss all of you, it's because the voices told me to. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, um, what's the game plan? Are right, someone staying up, taking watch, or? Yeah, I'll 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 stay up and. Um, so I need a couple of things from you, sir. One, I need you to roll a perception check. Yeah. Two, I need you to roll a constitution saving throw. <laughs> As you see the sun start to go down around you. Is that a constitution saving throw? Yep. Okay. Okay. So, um... As you're like seeing your rest of your compatriots like start to go off to bed, they find little corners of the place to kind of like sprawl out a bit, undo their bed rolls. Sadly, Torn has no more rations because they've all withered away to dust. Um, you um, you hear the pitter patter of what sounds like footsteps. Um, they they seem to like come and go. It's like. Uh, and as you hear this, like, you're really starting to lose semblance of time. You're not really sure any longer how long you've been, um, awake keeping watch, but you keep hearing this voice in your head that says, sleep, sleep, <laughs> they're all asleep, and you're really having a hard time keeping your eyes open, but you've managed to fight through it and stay but you keep getting compelled to listen, to, to see where this um, noise is coming from. This it feels like it's right above you. Just and you're you're like really having a hard time keeping awake. And you at this point can't tell if you're dreaming or not. But you swear you see motion from the corner of your eye, and you turn to kind of face in that direction, and you just catch a glimpse of a shape just scurry up the up the up the the, the wall and then you try to follow it kind of groggily and as you look up you see that there is a humanoid figure on the sh on the ceiling not facing you just kind of <laughs> shooting back and finally it, it kind of stops and it doesn't look down and you're kind of still hearing sleep and all of a sudden its neck just snaps down and stares <sighs> straight at you in a very like 180 degree stare uh, backwards, its head shouldn't be bending that way, is Galio um, uh, as kind of staring straight at you, and you look up, and he just goes, LEAVE! Uh, and that's where awesome. we'll end tonight's mission. Oh my goodness, no. <laughs> okay. you, you still like it? That, sweet dreams, sweet dreams, everyone. <laughs> that is the shit of nightmares. Uh, Dude, that's, dope. that's dope I like this mission uh, I feel really good about this one this one needed a lot of like improv and and and, and additions um, it was a lot of like the DM gets to decide uh, a lot of the flavor so it was a pretty good one that's cool yeah I was trying to creep you out at every turn so yes yeah, <laughs> You know, you should you should have had Sadiusius walk in a room and see like a sexy lady, and all of a sudden it turned into like a creepy lady, like The Shining. 
Oh, like The Shining. <laughs> yeah. The animation Ooh. hasn't happened yet. So. Ooh, Dang it. <laughs> Laura Man. Like, like in Doctor Sleep. Oh. Yeah. oh God, that's so creepy. Uh, yeah. And Galio, that stupid asshole. <laughs> Doc Brown action, motherfucker. <laughs> Yo, that was the best, though. That's totally what it is. <laughs> it's exactly who I pictured. I was, I was like, I'm just gonna to call get Doc Brown Emmett. Vibes. I was a million percent trying to get Doc Brown vibes. <laughs> yeah, you pulled it off. All right. Uh, well, that's where we will uh, we will pick up next time. Is as you, Seducius alone, are awake, uh, seeing um, a Galio on the ceiling, staring down at you. Uh, head articulated in a way that shouldn't be possible, uh, screaming "Leave!" in a terrifyingly deep, disembodied voice. Yeah. That reminds oh, me of some no. movie, that, that movie. Oh, uh, Sedusius has a reverse erection <laughs> right now, <laughs> which is weird. It seems bigger. <laughs> it's an ini, not an Audi, right now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, oh man uh, alright well for everyone on the stream thanks for hanging along hope we creeped you out as well mm. have a very good night and we'll see you on the next adventure bye y'all bye bye, bye.